But as soon as he poked him, he turned around and gave him the biggest headbutt. You know the ones where you have to jump upwards and then headbutt down? <laughs> John Barnes, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boom. Oh, he, the guy dropped. My dad stomping on his head and beating him up. And then oh. people are coming out the pub and like, I'm going to call the police. And my dad's running away. And Nisar, Barakallah, Fik for coming. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me, guys. Um, I know you travelled from the land of Mordor, wherever it is, or which is we call West Ham. Is it Hounslow or West Hounslow? Very close to Hounslow. Hounslow. Okay, what is it? Exactly? Where is it? I'm actually, Don't give out your address, obviously. Well. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll get too personal. But uh, no, it's actually in Ashford. Right. So there's a small town opposite Heathrow Airport uh, called Ashford. Uh, that's where uh, I, I live now. But I, you know, I kind of grew up in, in Hounslow. Yeah. So you say town? Yeah. So describe, is it like, I'm thinking... So you, you, you know, when you like, say town, you think it's not a village, but it's not a it's not a city. It's either. a city, so yeah. right in the middle. So right in the middle. So you don't have a cathedral. That I think right. that, that distinguishes us. Oh, from is not it? Being city. Yeah, if, you, oh, okay. if you're a city, you should have a cathedral there. So we're not that, and we're not a village. So we're in, in between. But so uh, you've been there all your life, or is pretty it pretty much? Pretty okay, much. So you yeah, grew up yeah. there. I grew up there. There's a, there's a hospital that I was born there in Ashford Hospital. So I was born there. Um, it's an interesting place for someone like me, from my background, my my ethnic origin. Yeah, uh, quite challenging growing up, as you can imagine. So uh, a lot of things that I had to contend with as a as a young person, that I'm sure all of us here can kind of appreciate. But it's it's very much more there for me. I felt because it's a very working class, if I can say, white area. How uh, white though? Very white. As in, uh, um, was there a lot? So of, in, in my uh, high school, as, a, yeah. as an example. I can count on my one hand the number of colored people that were in my in my in my school. So uh, and so why did you two, did two you, of them? Why did were, your parents move there? Well? So so my, two of them were sorry. Go two of them were actually well me and my sister. <laughs> so <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah. okay. So why did your parents move there exactly? So obviously my my parents came from, from India. Uh, they moved actually to the Midlands when they first were married, right. and they came to the, the Midlands. So they, they lived in Wolverhampton, and then my father had a great passion for. Um, Aircrafts. He loved okay. aircrafts. He loved flying. So he, 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 you know, he, he went for many, many years. And I actually saw this later as, as an adult. I went through uh, some of his things and I saw all the applications. He made 76 Skin. applications to different airlines. And I saw all the rejection letters. And I cried that day. You know, so it was a really, really... Uh, Heartbreaking, man. And he finally got it. He got, he, his, he got, he got, in, he got yeah. his break. So then he got his break and he got a job at British Airways. Mashallah. So then he left Wolverhampton, the Midlands, and he came to London. And he lived in, in Heston, which is very close to Bath Road in, uh, yeah. uh, in Hounslow. And then I was born. And then my siblings, we came along. So that's, that, that was the reason why all my cousins, they're all still in they're the Midlands. In, they're in, Midlands. in Birmingham, oh, okay. Walsall. They're, they're all up there. So yeah, yeah. So, so you caught life, yeah. man. You could have had a Birmingham yeah. accent, bro. Yeah. Brumby. Alhamdulillah. Brumby. <laughs> Uh, uh, shout out to all the Birmingham guys. Yeah, bro, I see the statistics. No, no one's watching for Birmingham, bro. Right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, I went to Dudley once, Dudley, actually yeah. a couple of times. It's Dudley. 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 Yeah. Dudley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what? I kind of like the Birmingham accent, especially in kids. Okay. And when it becomes, when, I mean, you wouldn't want a scientist to yeah. have a Birmingham. I mean, or like a, you know, your surgeon <laughs> to come right. So I'm going to take no, it. Right. Take your horse out. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you a transplant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit scouse a little bit yeah, yeah. it's going to be it's further, further north yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so um, but yeah alhamdulillah you're from you're in London you don't have that yeah. accent that, that would have been another barrier as well man. I know a lot, I, I know as well I, I remember watching a documentary about um, the BBC how they had to kind of train you know I don't know if you've ever watched mm. old really old footage of BBC news readers and stuff they had a specific type of way they used to speak mm -hmm. And they had to kind of anyone from the Midlands and someone from, you know outside of they had to kind of train themselves out of that that which is kind of it's more of a classist kind of sure. um, so to enunciate yeah, yeah exactly yeah, exactly yeah. well now alhamdulillah we don't have that problem now we've got subtitles now we've got subtitles <laughs> especially from the scousers uh, uh, but I love the scouse accent man. I love it I love man. it my, my, one of my teachers is, is from Liverpool a, a lot of my uh, friends are from Liverpool I, I absolutely love it it's, it's, um, I remember one thing I heard from Lenny Henry doing a, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and attempt it yeah go on um, it, it goes uh, was he, Migrants got leukemia. <laughs> <laughs> I love Steven Gerrard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry. Remember that one? All right, sorry. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> and that was Harry Enfield, right? 
Drum, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my days, yeah. So I love the uh, Liverpool accent. Oh, but you I dropped it, bro. Uh, like, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, people, right? yeah. Um, I remember went to Aberdeen once. Okay. Um, I must have been about. Why are you going so far? North, okay. bro? You, my, keep my, going, you, you keep know what's going. happened? Uh, my dad was. Um, so he was part of. There was some. He was part of this Algerian association where they were trying to free political prisoners from Algeria. So they would, they would go to different um, university campuses and lobby and stuff like that. So he took me with him to Aberdeen. Okay. And um, I, lo- I can't remember what day it was. I can't remember what, what, I think it was summer, but it was freezing. I remember it being cold. And the two, two, <laughs> two things happened there. I mean, once we got to Aberdeen and remember there's no GPS and we went in an old transit van. Do you remember those old transit vans? Um, the box one. I'm talking about 1970s one, bro. It was really old, yeah. And we got to to Aberdeen, and I remember my dad rolling down the window and asking a guy for directions, and he could not understand him, bro. Like you, your dad could understand the. Uh, he couldn't the understand him, bro. He goes, he yeah. like like the accent was so thick, thick yeah. Mm. Um, and then and then I remember we got to where we were going. And then I, this is the, the the memory I had of being stuck in a lift with a really overweight guy, and he was crying for about a good three hours, bro. That's my nightmare, by the way. Oh, getting stuck in Cla- lifts, cla- claustrophobia. Oh, yeah. I'm claustrophobic to the max. And you man. do jujitsu, bro. No, I do jujitsu, bro. It's crazy, we'll get into man. that actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, that, that's my distinct memory of being in Scotland yeah. and it being dark at two thirty, three o'clock as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's an exaggeration, but to, as a kid, yeah, my group's yeah, pretty early. It's up pretty there. early up pretty there, up right? There, yeah, 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 because they're closer to. I think they've got like a rook, so they've got a dispensation that you know you can join all your salas together. No, yeah. I'm joking, like, <laughs> but I know in North, wasn't it recently in yeah, yeah, was Sweden. It in Sweden? Sweden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, cool. I remember who it's was Sheikh Haytham go there? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And they did like a yeah, documentary yeah. or some sort yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I saw they they they, yeah, they did like travel, some sort of like travel log. Yeah, 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 travel log. Yeah, so uh, quite interesting. Mm-hmm. But you didn't come here to talk about Aberdeen. <laughs> um, so I guess I I'll, I'll tell the viewers about how I kind of come across you. Mm. And I was just telling you on the phone earlier that. Um, I think I can't remember how long ago it was, but this definitely be definitely before I um, I started training grappling, right? Uh, and I came, and this is when YouTube was like quite fresh. Yeah, I'm looking at 2012, 2011, something like that. And I came across your video. Sorry if I'm repeating this to you because I already said this to you, but this is for the, for the benefit of the viewers and the listeners. And you were talking about, I think you were purple belt then. Mm. I love Adam. I think you were purple belt. And you were you were you were giving a lecture about uh, I think you were you were in a gi and it's the first time I was actually exposed to jujitsu in that way around that time, and I remember watching Ultimate Fighter at the in the same year, and that's when I started getting like understanding you know MMA and because I came from a traditional martial arts martial arts, yeah, martial arts background yeah. yeah, and I think like I was telling you uh, I don't know if I, no, I, didn't, I didn't tell you this but my instructor actually he he kind of didn't want me to train other martial arts. Mm-hmm. So I, I was kind of like, I always wanted to do judo, always wanted to do other things, but no, no, he's very traditional, isn't it? He yeah, yeah, he's a purist, yeah. exactly, yeah. But there's only so many front punches you can do, isn't it, bro? Does that make sense? There's only so many forms you can do. There's only- <laughs> Kata. Yeah, because yeah. you want, you like, you want to exactly kata, mm-hmm. and I hate kata, man. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but there's only so much, uh, what's the word? Uh, you want to know who's the best fighter, bro. That's what you want, really. It always comes down to it that. It always comes it? down to that, it right? Does, Who does. is the best fighter, bro? Yeah. That's what you want to know. So I remember going through YouTube, watched Ultimate Fighter. Um, and then I was like, what, what's this jiu-jitsu stuff, man? And I remember, like, so UFC 1, I would have been really young. So I kind of caught UFC 1 after I watched Ultimate Fighter. So mm-hmm. for my thing was Ultimate Fighter first and then watched UFC 1 after that. And then I went to YouTube and then your name came up, bro, which is weird. So I watched it and it was, and then there's some... Um, you were in the park. I think there was one with you. I can't remember this video. I should have uh, researched this before I come here. And that's kind of, and then I kind of, over the years, like you've come in and out of the rave, but never, this is the first time I've met you since then. So the power of martial arts and the power of the internet, power how the it brings internet, people man. together. Mm. Um, so like today as well, I went to, so we've got grading next week, uh, jiu-jitsu grading next nice. week, uh, Sunday. So I went to buy the belts for them and I went to uh, the Budo store. Okay. This is a well-known martial arts shop okay. uh, in our area, mm-hmm. like in East London. Everyone used to go to Budo store. That's if right. you want to get nunchucks, 
That's the you know, you know, you know those, I don't know if you've got them in your area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have um, you got any, anything like that around? Or no, did, you have, did you have to travel? There, there was one called Shaolin Way. It right. was in Acton. So we used right. to go there. And you know when you're fascinated with the, with the flick knives yeah, and nunchucks yeah, 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 and the yeah. knuckle dusters and whatever you and all the there. all the kung fu films yeah, as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. on VHS. I, 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 had, I had a pair of um, you know what Raphael had in there. Yeah, uh, they're called Sai. 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 That's it. Yeah. And I was just there. You know, Did you ever use them? I've tried to use them. You know, at college in that, and then uh, we'll confiscate. <laughs> 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 but you know, I I never got those things, mm. man. They look like like um, skewers, bro. Yeah, like yeah, some kebabs on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. I was I was really interested in nunchucks. Yeah, everyone was. Uh, so yeah, my first pair of nunchucks were wood, okay. and I'm gonna knock myself out a few times with them. Yeah, you know when you when you try <laughs> and, and then, yeah yeah, uh, yeah you know that that noise, and then they, they had the foam ones. Remember you fill foam them up ones, with yeah, sand. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, so then you you can knock yourself out. <laughs> I mean, you can you can you know. go as hard as you want. Yeah, as hard as you want. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, today I went back to that shop and it's exactly the same. You know, these guys, they keep on. it. They don't their do, stock. They don't change it. No stock. I said, do you have BJJ there, belts? He goes, nah, I don't do BJJ belts. I go, BJJ. where? Yeah. He goes, just give me the judo belts, man. It's fine. <laughs> so <that's all> right. <laughs> I can't be bothered to order it online. Um, but yeah, so kind of like, and so, so this, the, the, I would say the Muslim marsh, I would say people from our generation are very much involved in I don't know, like Kung Fu and Karate mm, yeah. and Aikido. You know, the traditional, traditional, traditional yeah, martial Chung, arts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure you've gone through same, your same gamut phases, of... Yeah, 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 yeah. Phases, yeah. So talk us through now your martial arts or origin story. Because everyone's got one, especially someone who's yeah, been trained yeah, for as long as you have. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone's got... I think every, every, every boy, every man yeah. uh, participates, uh, has some collision with martial arts somewhere whether yeah. they embrace it or they reject it or whatever yeah. it always happens and it's, it's usually off of you know kind of being bullied or feeling inadequate lack of confidence for me it did start quite early on i'd say you know even as a, as a kid so I, I was involved in a lot of fights a lot of a lot of fights i was bullied you know quite heavily as, as a young person what kind of bullying like, so you know it started off with just basic basic name racism point, a lot of racism right. but it, it became very aggressive because then it was you know it wasn't just one on one it became you know kind of two on one three on one little gangs mm -hmm. with crew you know we had little they were called the bandits you know, they go around on bmx's and they come and they go packy bashing or whatever the case yeah. was back in those days and you know i was subjected to a lot of that sadly even my friends who were people in, in my school uh, you know, they turned against you when when it was favorable, or, you know, popular. Uh, you know, again, you're, you're you're the brownie in the class or whatever it was, and it was hard for them to speak up. So a lot of that brownie, yeah. yeah well, uh, you know, that's that's the term my, my wife uses. You know, when we talk about, uh, <laughs> I love that. Term. Is, yeah, brownie, I think that's that's an a term of endearment. Yeah, man, because <laughs> brownies are nice, man. They're nice, isn't it? <laughs> I love oh, brownies. Go, go to Costa again. Exactly. Yeah, brownie, yeah. Exactly. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't that nice back in those days. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, it all started off with uh, maybe just um, Wing Chun. I was. I think I remember doing that very first. I had like you were talking about the license. Yeah. After my, my, my picture, yeah, you know, yeah. back in 1989 and you know, all that sort of stuff. So but who then, taught you Wing Chun? You Wing Chun, uh, Sifu James. He was a local guy and uh, white guy, black guy, white, white guy, okay. white guy. Yeah. He, he was. A, he was a nice guy. He lived literally down the road from me, but. I, I guess it wasn't very comfortable for me. You know, I, I was clearly the, the odd one out in the classes. I wasn't given the same attention. And I, I think it fizzled out because I, I, I didn't enjoy it. Being in there, I just didn't like the setting of the class. And I, I kind of just left it because I, I couldn't find... For me, what was really important was that, and I later discovered this, was that martial arts had to be applicable. It had to be real. It had to be relevant. Okay, And if you're doing a lot of forms, if you're doing a lot of theoretical, conceptual movements... And then you go up to the fish and chip shop and, you know, what are you effing packy? What are you looking at? What are you like, doing? And then it just it the, goes. The, yeah. the whole feet thing. That all goes out the window, bro. You know? and it's the thing, really, you, you know, I remember us having the same feeling as you is, I remember when I was training karate, yeah? And I said, okay, I'm fighting against a karate guy, yeah? And we know what, it's almost like a dance, right? It's going back and forth, right? Front kick, side kick. And you, don't get me wrong, a lot of MMA guys, they Come like GSP, GSP guys, you got yeah. Wonder Boy, you got um, Machida, Machida, which is which is by the way his father is from the JK, which is the same lineage so that, I, I yeah, that I studied. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they were able to kind of, they but he, uh, obviously his father was open minded, didn't it? He kind of because uh, uh, he his son wanted to do MMA, so they've uh, they've even got like a whole um, school around it, and you know Shotokan for MMA and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But um, 
I remember thinking that is, would this would this work against someone who's just gonna rain punches on me? Well, I'm not just gonna do rising block, bro. And do you know what I'm saying, bro? Absolutely. Like yeah. my, I, my experiences. Of, of, I wasn't of, confident in it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like you say, my my experiences of of fighting combat confrontation was never like that. It mm. was a it was rush. You're getting rushed. You're yeah. getting rushed. You know, two two guys would come up. They just grab you know your, your blaze over the top of your head and smack you in the back of it. And it was it wasn't very. So whenever I was there, I'd sit there and I think, oh, it's not one. I'm not comfortable here because I'm perhaps not being taught in in the most uh, appropriate way. But also, how relevant is this? I'm I'm not going to be doing this, you know. You 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 thought that at that age, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because for me, it was it was really about uh, finding something that would make me feel uh, able to defend myself. It was very uncomfortable, mm. bro. I can't, yeah. you know, it's very hard to describe when you go. You, you're going to school. You're going to the park. And your stomach's bubbling yeah, with nerves, and you're like, "Bro, I need to go run. I've got. To go. I don't want to be here, I, you know." And it's yeah. it's really uncomfortable. So when and you're being there, out with your parents is even worse, isn't it? It's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. I remember yeah. my dad. You know, like I, I got beaten up outside. Um, I used to go to read Quran. I used to go, you know, for sacred study uh, to an auntie's house, and I'd go there. And at the same place, there's a bunch of you know estates and flats that were there, Viola Avenue. And I used to walk down there, and these three guys I, I knew from school. They'd come up. And uh, yeah, you know, and it's just the first time ever I I actually hit back when there was three of them. So I I was there getting the racial slurs, getting whatever, and then the guy pulled me in close, and you know, what are you gonna do? And I just smacked him straight in his face. And well, you got to describe I, it, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do you remember? To, to, did you front punch him? Did you elbow him? Did you know, kick it him? It was like the the way of the thousand fists. Oh, so you have done one of those ones, yeah? <laughs> yeah. kind of them ones. No, it was a bro. It was like a girly punch, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and he thought, "What is this guy doing?" Yeah. So then they just took it by themselves. The three of them, they just yeah, pushed yeah. me into the bushes. I was being kicked on, and really, it didn't hurt. The beating didn't hurt. What hurt was my friends who were just standing next Aye. to me. Did nothing. We I called him. You know, we called him in East London. It was like, did, did you see me back? Did it, you guys? see me back? It, guys. <laughs> 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 Do you know, what, you know. Let me explain. What did you see me back it, guys? Yeah. Did you see me back it? Is when there's a when there's a fight, and there's a there's too any, many people in any fight. There's a, there's a moment where there's chaos, right? And then that's when they. So when everyone goes back. Yeah, man, did you see what I did? Yeah, I bought this guy. Yeah, but I, I backed it. Yeah, but obviously he's just sitting in the corner, bro. He hasn't done anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they just do you see me they, back it, guys? And then they you. dare to be your friend afterwards as well, bro. It's horrible. horrible. Yeah, yeah. So I ran. I'm crying. I there. You know, it's yeah. not, that didn't. I, I felt like I could take the beat. I went home. My dad. It's your pride like, as well, isn't it? Everything. Everything hurts. And you're yeah. going home, and then my dad. My dad actually came with me. Goes, let's go find him yeah, in yeah. the car. And he's chasing them. He finds them, and they're running away. And he, he trips up. And I almost cry because I feel my dad like hurt himself. Yeah, yeah. But he gets up and he's running him and he's trying. Certified and, G, bro. You know, dad, yeah, man, that. Take my dad, yeah, yeah. But you know, th- th- those. Did you catch them though? No, man. They they they, they left. They, they left, had yeah. the police and whatever it was. But it, you know, j- just for me, martial arts had to be had to make me feel, give me yeah. that confidence to to be that bigger person, to be able to stand up to them and say what. Well, Let's go. Let's, let's I rate that your dad did that, man. Yeah, because yeah, um, I you. remember for us, I don't know about you, Zach, bro, but I was like, in I would like if I get my dad involved, it's, scary, it's gonna bro. get complex. Yeah, it's scary. The situation. Die. I remember one time, bro. I tell you a story, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if my dad's listening, like, you, you don't know this happened, but like I'll tell you what. Happened. So basically, what happened? My dad bought me a bike, yeah. So I'm our area was mad. Like you just Google Hackney in the nineties, and you, even now, yeah. So you always get these characters in, in the area. It wasn't, for us, it wasn't race. It was more kind of like, you're just getting rushed. Bullies, bro. Bullies, yeah? yeah. So I'm riding my bike and I was like quite fair, black, jet black handsome. hair, freckles. I don't know about you handsome, good. bro. <laughs> Buck teeth. I think there's a crazy look. He had the looks, bro. He had the looks, yeah. <laughs> Buck teeth, bro. Like very awkward. I'm on my bike. And um, this guy comes up to me. So kid must have been about I must have been about eleven, and he's about fourteen, fifteen. Goes, oh, let me have a go. And streetwise, because we're street, we know if I give him that bike, it's done. It's done. He's, I'm not, I'm not. So, but the things I'm thinking, I'm not going to beat this kid up. And if if I get into a scuffle with him, my dad's going to come and he's going to complex the whole situation up because he's going to beat up his dad. The whole area is going to get licks. Every, everyone's getting beaten, bro. The bin man who's taking out the bin, everyone's getting <laughs> That's the type of, like he doesn't ramp like that, bro. Yeah. So that's what I, was, I wasn't even scared of the guy, bro. In my head, I was like, I don't want my dad to go I'll to jail, bro. Wow. Wallahi, that's yeah, what I was thinking. Yeah. So 
I gave him the bike. Then I followed him. Mm. So he went and I followed him, yeah? <laughs> and, <laughs> and then he runs back. So I see where he put the bike in it. He put it in his house. Because he lives mm. down the road from me. So I don't know what he's thinking. Mm. So he comes back, yeah? And he's like, oh, someone stole the bike. And da 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 what? And, and I said to him, listen. I said him straight. I said, listen, yeah? I, I don't know who stole the bike, whatever. Look, but all I know is, if you don't give back the bike, my dad's going to kill you, bro. And I'm not even joking. I'm not joking with you. And he's going to kill me as well, bro. Do you understand? So please, just go get the bike. You don't want this smoke, bro. And I was pleading with him. For the sake of both of us. Bro. Yeah, yeah, for please. the sake of both of us. Because he's going to knock me out and he's going to knock you out as well, bro. So he looks dead in the eye and he goes, okay, wait there, wait there. He went and got the bike. <laughs> And I was like, so I sad. didn't expect it to work here, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't even me trying to like finesse it the guy. Was just really true. from here, I was like, I know my dad. He just complexes situations up, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and being embarrassed like that, bro. I've seen him whoop people, bro. Like that guy. Uh, let's not. Maybe is the statue of lift limitation gone? Which guy? <laughs> when he done that thing in, next to the cash point. Oh, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they hear this, man. Oh, man. See, what? see, the thing is... I like, think you your dad on the podcast. Yeah, so mate. I might yeah. get him on. I might get him on, inshallah, bro. Do you want to tell the story? No, you tell it. No, you, you tell it. Because you were there. I wasn't there. Uh, basically, it, it was it was a very, <laughs> very sad day for me because I just got a bad report from school. So he was already angry. How was old were you then? What, what, what year I was like 12, maybe. Yeah. I was in secondary school. Yeah, seven, seven, seven. yeah. and then... And then he went Zach to the was cash naughty, point. by the way. Yeah, was like always getting in trouble. It was bad. It was bad. Uh, then he went to the cash point because he had to pay the fees for the school. Yeah. So even then, he's like, this guy got a bad report. So now I have to pay the fees because I was a private school, yeah? Oh, and then he went to the cash point and then there's, there's this white guy, skinhead, just come out of the pub. So there's a pub right next door to the yeah. bank. Yeah. yeah. And then he go, my dad's putting in his pin. You know my dad, he's got his pin number on his belt. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Why you giving out your secrets, bro? <laughs> nah, he don't do that no more. <laughs> he wears jockey bobs. <laughs> so he's checking, the, he's checking his belt I remember now. that, bro. I remember that. And he's got all these numbers on there, on the belt. The yeah, yeah. yeah. Wicked, wicked. <laughs> and then the guy in the back, he's like, hurry up, you effing patty. And then my dad is like, he looks back, he's like, excuse me? No, no, he asked you, what did he say? Either. No, he goes, excuse me? What, did, you, did you hear what he said? I goes, nah, he didn't say nothing, man. Don't worry about it. And I'm looking at the guy, I'm like, please don't say nothing else, man. And then he pokes him. He's like, I said, hurry up, you. But as soon as he poked him, he turned around and he gave him the biggest headbutt. You know the ones where you have to jump upwards and then headbutt down? John Barnes, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Boom. He, the guy dropped. My dad's stomping on his head and beating him up. And then people are coming out the pub and like, I'm going to call the police. And then my dad's running away. And then the guy's like, you better run, you pay. And then he runs back. He starts kicking him again. Bruv, it was like a film, man. We had to run to the car. And we got home and there was buttons missing in his shirt. <laughs> and my and mom, my mum's yeah. like, you'd be fighting, innit? <laughs> I was like, nah, man, what are we talking about, man? Because there's buttons mom missing. Score, mom knows the score. Mom bro. knows the score, bro. Yeah. Bad, so so that's like, my, I remember one time in Dulston Market, bro, there was these bullies from school, bro. Like, just, just wrong ones, bro, yeah? And they were throwing onions at my dad. Like, they weren't throwing it at him. They were just rolling it on the floor. So it hit my dad, didn't it? And... Um, I looked at them, I was like, listen, don't do that. <laughs> bruv, seriously, don't do that. You're not ready. <laughs> bruv, he do, he's not the guy, he doesn't care about child services, bro. None of that stuff. Like, like that's he, out the window. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like when he sees red, yeah, that is it. that's it. So yeah. when me and Zach are with him, we have to kind of do damage limitation. Yeah, like, I'm worried for you, bro. In Oxford Street, bro, <laughs> this is another one, yeah? Oxford Street, my granddad was there. It was me, my granddad, and my dad. So three generations, we're walking on Oxford Street. This guy just decides to come and push me, bro. I must have been 16. He's a grown man. So he just pushes me. I think he's mistaken me for someone else or whatever. Before I even, like, they've dragged him into the alleyway <laughs> and they're just chiefing up, chiefing my, my granddad. <laughs> my dad, granddad and my dad just chiefing him up in the alleyway. Yeah, together just. <laughs> and they're fighting, not fighting each other, yeah. but like, like, let me deal with No, no, no. <laughs> and the guy's looking at them like, they're, they're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> the sentence. Here. So, subhanAllah, it was like, so, so you know, like we're we're, trying, we're glorifying it, yeah. But it's in hindsight, it's like my dad didn't like Zolom, bro. He doesn't like oppression. Do you understand? And, and he's in Algeria now. So just, we just, I told you, we just took, yeah, uh, yeah, Zach, took him, dropped yeah, him to true. airport. Yeah, but yeah. he's never been able to be quiet, bro. Like you know, just Such just a beautiful quality. Yeah, but also like I, I know doesn't get the, the promotions. Doesn't 
never like quit so many jobs Job. because of that, okay. bro. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And that stability kind of goes a little bit. Yeah, really but Subhanallah, temporary. you know what? He's he can live with his head held high, innit? it? And but I remember us. It was we're always nervous going out. Wow. In a, like, can you imagine like your family? Yeah, yeah? you got your mom with hijab, bro, car chasers, and Ka- bro, like Eid. I remember Eid. My mom was pregnant. Anyone with cut up your dad, boy? It's all over, right? Yeah, because he didn't like like. And the thing for him was, I'm a Muslim. Proudly. Yeah, bro. Like you don't ramp with me, bro. Because if I let this go, mm. then someone else is gonna get it, bro. Down the line, you push that. Does that make sense? So, and that's kind of where we get our. I, I think this is Ghaira, bro, and jealousy yeah, yeah. for for your deen, isn't it? For for and not just Muslims, bro, mm. just oppressed people, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Like wronged could, people, people, wronged. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, if you wrong, see something bro. wrong, like he so, couldn't, yeah. he couldn't, um, like stay quiet, bro. Sometimes we'd have to like. Put yeah, yeah. Not, let's go this your way. Fight. Like, yeah, 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 leave it, bro. Yeah, and bro, yeah. oh, so many times I, I promised myself I'm not gonna say bro too many times. Because <laughs> I, one of my kids' friends, he goes, you said he was counting how many bros <laughs> I said. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. That's happy for you, bro. <laughs> but yeah, so it was, it was like talking about like you know what you were going through, seeing your dad doing that. Mm. A lot of dads wouldn't do that, bro. And and sometimes as 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 a, as a son, you need that backing, innit, bro? Mm. Do, so. No, you don't want to be told. Oh no, no, don't worry, don't make a, don't make a scene. Leave it. They'll, they'll leave you alone. And do you know what I'm saying, bro? No, you Sometimes don't. you have to walk away, bro. Sometimes. No, I, I, I watched this video recently of Steve Harvey. I don't know if you watched Steve Harvey, the, the comedian. comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, he, and he said that the most inspirational person in his life was his father, and it was just simply him telling him that he could do something. Yes. And you know, he, you're talking back in the kind of uh, the 60s, uh, African Americans were struggling to, you know, with a lot of things. But you know, for him to uh, have the audaciousness to to go on TV and he goes, Dad, I want to be, you know, on TV. Uh, and like his mom saying, Oh, it's ridiculous and you know, what a silly thing, you know, African American, how are you ever gonna get on TV? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his dad right. kind of just turned around and said to him, goes, Why not? What's wrong with that? And he had his back and he, you know, he said to him, it's a really it's very powerful that like, you watch the video of, of him looking at, like talking about this experience and he goes, you know, I, I was there thinking my dad's gonna beat me up because I did a, a bad thing in school. And he said, you know, you keep these little notes of your dreams of what you want to do and you keep plugging away at them. And he goes, I kept that forever. You know, I kept that. He's a very successful comedian, mm. you'll see. But you need, you know, father figures, you know, those positive people. A lot of people may, may, may think negative of what you, your, your kind of dad Yeah, is. yeah, 100%. But bro. For me, you know, being unabashedly Muslim, being the man of the house, you know, having his sons and his daughters, you know, his family. You need that strong role model. Hundred percent. And I think for me, only now I've become a father. Mm. Um, you realize that what your dad's done for you, bro. Mm. And I remember I say to my uh, my kids, and also the students that we teach. I said to them, I always say this to them. I say, your mother is like a house, a beautiful house. Yeah. Inside the house, it's warm, it's inviting, it's comfortable. Yeah. But your father is like the door, yeah? No one recognizes the door in the house. But when the door is missing, that's the only thing that you can, does that make sense? No matter how, imagine you see a beautiful house with no door. That's the only thing, but why is it got a door? What's going on? And what, what's, what does the door do? Safety, it keeps the heat in, it keeps the intruders out. And that's the father, that's what, it's only when the door is not there. And that's, that's our job, as men in general, I remember think I uh, watched the video today actually was someone talk about men we don't get praised at a man when he does something yeah. he's not praised it's like we're not we're not we're not we're not brought up to be like women need to be praised they and 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 they should I'm not saying they shouldn't yeah. but for men we don't expect that yeah does that make sense I'm not trying to kind of pull on all the the, the tears and whatever it's not You're that the, yeah exactly <laughs> but I'm a mom I'm telling me because uh, Allah created you with broad shoulders so you can you bear it, bro. that's bear it, it. that's it so but yeah I, I never when I look back I think he did that because imagine I said think about it yeah? your father came here from India yeah mm. to a country which is not only foreign but also hostile mm. you go to for example right now pick up your whole family and even myself mm. and go live somewhere like Texas mm. Oh, forget Texas, forget Texas. It goes to another country where you can't even speak like China and having to learn the language, you know, the culture, navigate the culture, navigate the... the accepted. Yeah, all good. of that stuff. I'm like, wow, like what they did was like 
crazy. Absolutely. And we, we really take it for granted, isn't do, it? Like, and like you say, it's only when you become a parent yourself. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, we're speaking to perhaps uh, uh, young people mm. and they perhaps can't relate to that because they're, they're not at that stage yet. But it really is when, when you, you're you given that responsibility and it's on yeah. your, you think back, you're like, whoa, all that my parents did, all yeah. that my elders did. You know, we, we owe them a great debt. 100%, yeah, man. Definitely, man. 100%. Yeah. So yeah, I'll cut you up on that story, bro. But <laughs> so you, 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 you kind of yeah. like... So we can tell that your dad chased them down. Chased them down and then you know, fast forward a couple of years yeah. and then uh, I, I got to the point where um, I had a lot of experiences like in, in college. So college, college things changed for me a little bit. I'm heavily, I was heavily into basketball. Yeah. yeah, I used to play ball. Is that play ball? Really? Shut like you're tall as well, man. So, uh, <laughs> a little bit. Can you dunk, bro? Yes, yeah, so we have to dunk. Yeah, no yeah, proper yeah, yeah, yeah. wrist oh. in and everything. Yeah, uh, I'll put another wrist in, but like only fingers. off one foot. One foot. Okay. People are like, oh, you're two foot dunk or one foot, one foot. But two foot uh, dunks, another one. That's bro. another one. Isn't it? Yeah, the vertical has to be there. But uh, do you play for a team? I used to play for school team, college team, uni team. So I played all oh, three. Yeah. So I did. All we used right, to play. We used our uh, uh, our school team. Yeah. Um, our coach yeah. Joe White, yeah. he was like um, Towers, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's our coach. We used bro. to come to Hackney to play, and we just wanted to. We would compare ourselves to to basically anybody in Hackney. Yeah, yeah. So Joe Hackney, was the yeah. guy, man. Yeah, Joe White was us. Awesome. He used, to, you know, he used to make us do every Friday. Um, you know the Kobe Adidas trainers. I don't know if you yeah, remember yeah. them. I remember them. You know the Kobe yeah, yeah, with the with the, 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 thing, the, the modules. Like yes, that. yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So because we had a, we had a sponsor, he managed to get Kobe. a sponsorship. Yeah, the Kobe. Do you remember those, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to make us shoot for them. Oh, so he'd go yeah, to the fr- yeah. uh, free throw, okay. not free throw, the three pointer, yeah, yeah. and you make ten three pointers. You get you get a Kobe uh, pair, pair of shoes, shoes, but I never got them, bro, because I was whack at shooting. <laughs> shoot bricks all day, bro. Just bricks. That was the but, only thing I was pretty good at. I was okay. I was okay shooting because growing up we used to play on the netball rings in school. Yeah, and, uh, you know that used that's to help. Dead, my, my bro. Shot, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's heartbreaking. Was only plays basketball, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, so you played at a pretty decent I, level. I, I That's how I tore my patella, bro. Ah. I had an injury in 2020. It wasn't even for jujitsu or anything, bro, or wrestling. I was, um, I'd done a step over. Um, again, remember, like uh, lockdown, didn't do any exercise, gained a bit of weight. Went out to the courts. The, the, these guys, whoever's listening, I've said this story so many times. But yeah, so I'd done a step over and then my knee just popped. So it was, uh, it was, it was through basketball. Um, you forgot to mention it was a twelve-year-old girl. <laughs> it was a twelve-year-old niece. <laughs> I crossed her over, broke her ankles, bro. <laughs> 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 well, so okay, yeah. so you play basketball in basketball? Yeah, so, so from kind of from school. You play games and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so there, there was. Um, any oh, video of you that. playing it, bro? No, 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 no. I, I mean, on, actually, man. there's actually one of me in China. I went to, so the Chinese uh, at university were very, very popular. They used to love the basketball. Yeah, they love basketball. basketball. They love yeah, basketball, yeah. big culture. Uh, Filipinos. I used to play, uh, I wasn't on the team, so I have to make that clear in case people try to, you know, yeah. count me. <laughs> Ealing Tornadoes. Ealing Tornadoes uh, they had a very, very good team. Uh, a lot of national players on there or whatever. So I used to play a little bit for them. In fact, today, just today, I took my son for the first time. He's eight years old. He loves basketball. I got a hoop in the in the back. He goes, "Oh, Baba, I want to go to uh, you know play for a team." So I said, like, "Okay, let's go to Hounslow." We went there, and this coach, st- the coach there, and I used to go to college together. Oh, okay. so Wesley, and we were just speaking to him today. He goes, "Oh, it's good, man. You got him back in and stuff." It just you know brings back a lot of the memories of so basketball is lovely, oh, man. Lovely. Yeah. Such uh, very grueling, bro. Yes, yes, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Do you used to go su- run suicides suicide, and all that stuff? All stuff and, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. We used to go. We used to go play in Brixton. We used to go play in Halsden. Yeah. So we used to come. How, how, the, you guys had amazing. Our team. Had, we had two guys that. Um, there was a guy called Jeffrey Danchi. Okay. He went to America, okay. but I don't know if he made the NBA or not. But to be honest with you, there was not enough uh, resources, bro. Right. Do you understand? Right. But he was very good. Okay. Him and his older brother. Uh, I was keeping a tab on him after because you know internet at that time wasn't as sure, you know yeah, no one had true, Facebook yeah, or social yeah, media yeah, or whatever. True. I really wonder what he's doing now. But yeah, we had a few really really good players. Sure. I feel like national champions, bro. We were like uh, it was uh, no, it's no man. These, these guys yeah, are yeah. for basketball. Sure, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. so I was like the I used to bring out half time oranges. That's <laughs> like the water boy. <laughs> I was the water boy, <laughs> bro. I was alright at basketball, sure, but I was wild, bro. So Joe was like, you need to calm down, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They used to call me spaghetti legs. So you're all over the place because I was all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, um, but I never, like, I never took it, took it any, any further than second. I had school. big dreams, but yeah. I was there, man. I, you went to go proper I, play I, I, in college. I remember refusing to put in my UCAS application for uni, and my mum was looking. What, what are you doing with that? Oh, I'm going to NBA, mum. 
Why not, bro? bro? Why not? So I said, it's like, you know, I Where's said, Steve Harvey's dad when you need him, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I said, an application for I remember I wrote to, his name's David Stern, who's the old commissioner of the NBA. I wrote to him. My dad actually met him. My dad met him in New York City. My dad used to do these uh, uh, courier trips and uh, to New York. My dad... Uh, Korea? It sounds like... Korea, you smuggle yeah, yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> take, your take your packages. Take your packages over British Airways. But he used to go... I like, used to get to go on Concord. He used oh, to go wow. on Concord. And he used to go... And he, basically, British Airways would have these documents that he'd have to take. Right, and if right. you could take them... My dad, in one year, went to New York 37 times. Wow. Before How long was the flight to Concord? Uh, Concord, it takes three hours. From, from London Heathrow to JFK, it was three hours. So, and how, uh, how long is it with normal... Was I know almost about seven hours. Yeah, wow, seven so hours, in, yeah. Yeah, what happened yeah, yeah. to the Concorde, man? Concorde, man, it's, it's just... But it was too expensive, right? It was too expensive. Yeah, yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah. Does he stay there and relax yeah. and... Or is this no, so on some, back? literally, some days he'd have to do like a three-hour stopover and then back. That's oh. mad, yeah. But sometimes he'd actually get to stay and he'd, he'd go there. And he actually had... Uh, well, okay. My, my, <laughs> I'm going to tell, tell you a few... Go ahead. My, my, my younger brother is a big wrestling fanatic and he's not wrestling like... WWE. You know, WWE. He's 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 gonna love that I mentioned this. Go on. Uh, he's best friends with Brett the Hitman Hart. If you remember Brett the Hitman Hart, uh, he was a famous. Did he Canadian. die recently? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. That was someone else. That was um... his, his cousin or his brother-in-law, British Bulldog. If you remember British Bulldog, yeah, I remember British Bulldog. He died. Yeah, yeah. yeah he died. No, but there's another guy, Owen Hart. Owen Hart. Owen Hart. Owen Hart. Right. Yeah, he, yes. Yeah, he, yeah. The one who used to come from the ceiling. From remember? The thing, he came down. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So Brett Hart. So he's he's very close. He's actually friends with my brother. Right? How? So Brett, like, I don't know how for the last. Where's your brother? Is five, he in the UK? He's in the UK, mum and dad. Yeah, he's in West London. But my brother, my brother, uh, undercover has been a WWE rep, whatever that means. So whenever the, the WWE guys come here in, in the UK and they do tours and whatever, he promotes them. He goes there. What, he goes still to, to this day? To this day, he was just last week, two weeks ago. Bret Hart came and he was giving a talk in, in Telford, somewhere in Midlands. Bret Hart Bret in Hart. Telford. Yeah, man. That's mad, bro. Yeah, it's really edgy. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So yeah, That's so crazy. I, but you know, raw. There we go. Yeah. Bro, you know what? I never Muhammad, used to get Muhammad, it. That's for you. That's for you. <laughs> no, I never used to get it, bro. Why do you never? Come? That's what I want to know, bro. Why? Why are you? They always miss. The... <laughs> It's about 64, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calgary, there you go. Canada, yeah, yeah. So Owen Hart was in his... Yeah. Oh, was his brother, his Owen brother, Hart. Yeah, yeah so I thought they were related. Yeah, 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 yeah okay. Yeah. So um, how do we get into that? Yeah, so wrestling was a thing. And my dad used to meet... So my dad met uh, Hulk Hogan. Do you remember Hulk Hogan? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Bro. And on, yeah, so yeah, they, they're on the Concord Which flight. Hulk Hogan, though? The one with the NWO Hulk Hogan? Or? It was old school, man. No, because... Yeah, yeah, no, no. Hulk Hogan had different phases, in it? So in the nineties, he, the he macho man became face. a baddie. Baddie, remember for a little yeah, bit. No, no, a your brother would know if he's listening yeah, to this. Yeah, he if, if he will listen to this, yeah. what's your brother's name? Muhammad. Muhammad, my yeah, best of yeah. names. Muhammad, if you remember the Hulk Hogan phase where he had the black, he dyed his beard black and his moustache blonde. Oh, you, you know more. He about was a bad me, guy. Okay. I used to, I used to watch him. He was bro. the heel then. He was the heel exactly, yeah, bro. Hero, yeah. And also, Muhammad, if you can, you know, scalp us some tickets, bro. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going watch your WrestleMania, bro, or something. Bro, that Holla could happen. Boy. That could happen. That could really happen. And by happen. the way, by the way, do you know how many people come to Legion thinking we teach WWE? <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> the hip toss and where's the ring at, man? The, where, where, where's the ring? Where's the, where's the, what's it called? The, the top suplex, ropes. Uh, yeah, the suplex, top rocks. Uh, well, suplex we do, in it? What's uh, the other one? The, 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 the DDT, DDT, DDT. Tombstone. Tombstone. Okay, so, yeah, so your brother. So, so, my, yeah, so, so my dad, he met some of these. So on that same flight, he met David Stern, who was the commissioner of the NBA. I got to write to him. They, he wrote back to me, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm going to the NBA, man." And then that didn't happen. So uh, what happened? Like? I went to University of Westminster. <laughs> <laughs> I studied BSc Computer Science. The one in uh, Marylebone. Road. Marylebone. Okay. I was there for what year? Uh, what year did you go? I was there. Uh, to, so I, I, I did 2000. I, I started in 2000. I was at Marylebone campus, and then I, I got appendicitis. So I had to have surgery and then I just flopped that whole year. Basically, mm. I couldn't go back. I missed too many classes. So I, I left that. And then uh, I went back the next year and I started in 2001. I, I actually graduated in 2003. So, uh, so when did yeah. my, my dad went to yeah. West Ham? You know, Westminster? Yeah. Oh, yeah, West my uncle went to West Ham. Oh, yeah, my dad yeah. studied in Westminster. Actually, you know who he went in? Uh, he went Westminster. Ali, bro. Ali Yusuf. What was that? Yeah. But I think he went to another campus. Mm. I just baited his whole life up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the married the bond. There's a few brothers, actually, because you're just a couple of years older than me, right? Yeah, so, 
2003, so we would have been in university. That's when we started university yeah, in 2003. Started, yeah, and you would have been kind of on the way up. Yeah. So you did computer science, right? I did computer science. And that, that was interesting because it was there that I really learned about, you know, coming back to martial arts, that yeah. I really didn't know anything about combat. You know, like I've been, I've been in loads of fights. I'd been, you know, playing basketball, scuffles, this and that. But it really dawned on me when I was at university and... Um, we were in a situation where some some guys came and literally we had to you know we had to deal with them at, at university at, at university <laughs> yeah. kind of university it was really <laughs> weird yeah it was just really, in like, university in university so we were there and like it was a whole thing and it, it was sad because it was probably with it was probably with other brothers it was other people that we, we kind of uh, normally associate with and these guys were just very very aggressive and you know like university we're all trying to be the man you know we're all trying to be the top you know and it, again egos are, are yeah. getting involved in whatever and it realized, I, I realized when, when, when there's about five of them coming at me that I don't know anything about really fighting. And that, that's where I, I, I went on a bit of a journey to, to search out, to look at. So I, I basically, you know, I ran away from that situation. And I, which is, I, I which is the smart thing to do, bro. It, yeah, but it's hard to take. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. The pride in you, the ego in you, it's, it's very you want difficult. some more, bro? Thing. Yeah, please. Shukran, thank you. So, okay, so you, these five dudes. Yeah, so I was in a situation and I, I, I wasn't happy with the way I dealt with it. I, I, I managed to get out of it by faking it, you know, faking that uh, I knew something. And it worked, you know, just going in. And I remember just rolling up my sleeves in this situation. Like, oh, bro, let's go. Uh, just doing that kind of mentally disarmed the guy. Right. And then he, he was supposed to meet in the car park. I'm a bit didn't. scared right now, bro. Yeah, I'm <laughs> four arms. Please, bro, put your sleeves down. Bro. <laughs> Allow it, please, bro. I'm getting flashbacks of my dad, bro. Someone's gonna get knocked out, bro. We <laughs> like your pin number, bro. <laughs> so then, when he when he kind of you know, he, he backed out, he didn't come yeah. to the car park. But I, I saw him come with the guys, and I just got into my car and I went home. It dawned on me. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, Nah, man, this can't happen. And then. We talked about UFC. I was given uh, a video, and this is from Shaolin Wei. You know that that that, yeah, that, yeah. that old school. Dusty. The connect, yeah, the connect, yeah, bro. Yeah. The martial arts connect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he gave me the UFC. He goes, look at this, bro. Gracie in action video. So yeah, watch Gracie this. in action. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I had all the VHS. And I was like looking at. It, I thought, this is amazing. I have to give a shout out to my my boy uh, Desmond Harris. He's a guy I used to play basketball with. He was actually actually a Shotokan karate guy. Uh, but he played a lot of basketball uh, and uh, we went from college to university together and it was him in his dad's dojo he goes come on let's just try that stuff out where's his dojo bro? in yeah. Ealing Broadway if you go Ealing Broadway behind Ealing Broadway Peter and Michael Harris uh, Shotokan Karate they, they had their bro their, google their, it bro uh, yeah it's probably not, I don't know but it's probably not there but uh, Desmond is a very close friend to this day you know he's, he's a lovely he's, he's my dear brother so we he'd get his mats out he goes yeah, that stuff. Let's just try it. And we were very much into the movies, you know, Jackie Chan, Jet yeah, Li, yeah. we were all that. And we, the stuff ain't working. We we would exhaust ourselves to the point where I couldn't even drive home. And this so was at uni. Doing what? Sorry, grappling, just grappling. So did we you saw, know what you were doing. We didn't know nothing. We didn't know nothing. We just put the mats out and said, okay, look, let's 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 leave the punches, let's leave the kicks, let's just see what they're doing because we saw this Gracie guy do it. Let's see what we can do. Hoist, hoist. Yeah. So then, I didn't know what I was doing. We said, okay, let's 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 try and work on this. So well, I'm just trying to imagine it in my head. Yeah. So you just in some room somewhere in his dad's dojo. In, in his dad's dojo in Ealing. So you just we put the mats grab, out. Yeah. And we said, right, you know, old school. I'm just gonna go until you give up, bro. We still have this game. But, but what was the rules though? Just to make him give up. Like how? There was anyway, no, no, striking. no striking. So okay, right. I, I used to have this thing in school where we, it was called mercy. Oh, and you get, have the hands oh yeah, 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 yeah. Say yeah. mercy. And then we used to have these little scraps where you have to give up. If you got him in a headlock, kind of choking yeah, out. Tap, basically tap, submit. Tap. Yeah, submit. kind of submit. submit. So yeah, 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 give up. So then that's all we used to do. Like, until you, you gave up. And, oh, enough, enough, enough. I can't take it. Like, like, sit on my head or whatever, else. My head. <laughs> whatever else he could do. So I'm just trying to yeah. that's quite, that's yeah, quite, yeah. how so old were we at the time? Yeah, I was in uni. So I was like so 19, 19, 20, okay, whatever right, it was. Right. So we did that. And I remember f exhausting myself, feeling wicked. I was like, Whoa, what a workout, but not knowing anything. So then, Again, I went on a search and I said, okay, let's, 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 let's see what this is. And I, I went and tried to, you know, there wasn't Google at the time. So it was just yeah. like looking around. The loot uh, or something, uh, yellow pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Geocities or something. Geocities, like Geocities my Geocities. God, yeah. So just looking up and I, I, I came across uh, BJJ London. So this is now, we're talking 2002. Yeah. 2002, I, I, I was still at uni, coming into my final year. 
and I find BJJ London with some Brazilians teaching it there. It was in Earl's Court, and uh, the instructor was Wilson, Wilson Jr. He was a brown belt at the time. And I, I turned up there, and in fact, he wasn't there on the first day. It was a whole heap of other guys, and they just did the warm-up. And the warm-up killed me. I couldn't do. I, I basically. What was the warm up? Do you remember? It's the typical stuff that we do now. All, all the wrestling stuff. There. Shrimping, uh, yeah. I mean, forward we, rolls, back forward roll. But we, we used to do like a lot more of a calisthenics. Kind of yeah, yeah, calisthenics. You know, burpees and you know press ups and sprawling and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then you 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 grapple at the end of it. Yeah. And then I was like, man, I'm finished. My neck was gone. Whole months I didn't go back. <laughs> <laughs> One month. And then my student loan came in. I'm like, okay, I've got a bit of money now. Let's go back. How I'm much back. was a session then, man? How? How much was a session? So to to do three sessions a week, uh, and you can do it for a month, you pay fifty pounds. So, so it's not that's uh, quite expensive for that time, it was bro. Expensive. Yeah, 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 bro. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I couldn't afford to. So the first class was free. But I couldn't afford to do it. So that's why I waited for my student loan to come in, and then I I, I got the money, and I was like, okay, cool. You made it rain. Like yeah, like, yeah. So I went there, and uh, I remember taking cash out, and I was like, oh, man, I'm gonna give this over to the guy. And I gave it again, shout out to Luca. Luca is an Italian uh, friend of mine. He actually, uh, he was very, very pivotal in, in, in forming what's now known as Carlson Gracie London. Right. Very uh, pivotal guy. And I handed over 50 pound cash. And I was like, boy, I'm going to make every session now. I don't care what happens. So it was three sessions a week? Three sessions or a unlimited, week unlimited like you can go as many. Yeah, I mean, there were only three sessions. So you oh, go Monday, okay, Wednesday, Friday. Right. That was That's it. it. Albany it. Hotel. We go there and we'll. Was see. it dedicated gym or is it? Kind no, of no, a, it's, just, a hot, it's a hotel. It's the basement of a hotel, wow. Albany Hotel. You can look that up, uh, Albany Hotel. That's where that, that's where Carlson Gracie started. It was actually yeah. there, and that's where I met the world of people. I met Sambo specialists. I, I came across my my friend Simon Hayes, Dicky Martin, uh, Walid. You know, these were the guys that were there. Scruffy old Matt in the basement. Um, and you, you, you know, we we would learn jujitsu, and that was my first exposure to it. I I, I immediately was gripped. Within within uh, two months, I did my first tournament. Hoist Gracie was my ref in my first ever match. What? So the very That's first, um, it was called the Gracie Invitational. It oh yeah. Happened yeah, yeah. In, in, in 2003, it happened. Did in, it in the UK? Yeah. UK Dagenham it was in Dagenham, and I remember going through it. I flopped, man. I went in there. I got triangled straight away. But it was more out of nerves than yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, anything else. Hoist was my my ref. That's nuts, man. Uh, Hoist and Wilson, my instructor, had a bit of an altercation, which is very interesting as well, uh, on the day. But the lineage is of, is kind yeah, of yeah, it's different. There's right? a there's a lot there's of a break, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah. So there's a bit of a you know, and again the the Brazilian culture was something that I was I was I was getting to grips with as well. You could see it, you know, like some were, we talked about Rujula, we talked about you know uh, being men that, that that was very much present in those days. In, in that They've time. got a very much, a very Arab kind of way of, uh, you know, like uh, as an Algerian, mm. when I see Brazilians, there's mm. some things that obviously like don't cross over, sure. but it's very uh, masculine type kind of yeah. uh, machismo. Yeah, machismo. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Much, yeah, like yeah, um, yeah. honor Honored, and definitely. Uh, Brazil. And I, I've been to Brazil twice for training, and I've, I've spent a good bit of time there, five weeks at a time. There is there is still to this day honor in the way that they they have a fight. Mm. You will you'll get the rushes, you'll get people gangs and all that. Yeah. So gangs are rife. You know, I spent time in Rio and it's it's rough. It's not it's not easy. But if you offer somebody out and you have it there, it's one on one, mm. and you see it all the time. They have a they have a square like goal. Like the travelers as well. They yeah. do the same. Yeah, the same thing. thing. Travelers, Similar, yeah, yeah. yeah, the same thing. You know, it's it's a square goal and it goes to the end. Oh my day, you're pulling out some old school stuff here, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What did you type in, Zach? Yeah. Gracie yeah. invitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that you? No, no, it's not up there. There's Willie. There's Willie there. there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, there he is. That, that was there. Yeah, that was the, uh, he got his black belt. That's Simon and uh, and, and Dicky. Oh, there. Yes. Uh, Which one's Dicky? Is that you? Dicky's the one on the on, is on the. Yeah. Is that you? My, yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Embarrassing picture. <laughs> 2008. Handsome guy, Mashallah. That bro. was the the year I actually I, I went. Um, so there's this again feelings of inadequacy. You talk about this a little. Yeah. So I remember getting my 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 purple belt 2008, and I felt, ah oh, man, I don't deserve it. I did a couple of tournaments in, at uh, Blue, and I got a few silvers, but I still didn't feel like a purple. Yeah. So I said, uh, Wilson, what does a purple feel like though? That's the thing. You know, it's a it's a really interesting question because it's that middle belt in yeah. jiu-jitsu. So yeah. for our viewers, you know, there's only five belts in jiu-jitsu. It's that middle belt. Uh, and you, you're there and you, you're kind of struggling to oh, I don't deserve it do I deserve it got a few silvers I'm alright so I told Wilson I'm going to Brazil and he goes why and he says I'm going to go compete in, it was called the Rio Open it was right. like it's now what's known as the, the Masters 
So after 30, you, you know, you're, you're not in the adult category, you go to Mark. So it was actually held in Rio before. So I went there, paid my fee, and uh, I said, I just wanted to feel secure in my purple belt. Right. Am I really a purple belt by their standards? Yeah. So I went to Brazil, I went to, to compete, and yeah. <laughs> he's bringing out all the old embarrassing pictures. <laughs> oh, that's you, isn't it? On that's the, it, on, on the, on the far right, yeah. That's it. Uh, How old are you here, bro? I don't know, bro. I'd say brown belt, man. That's 20. So you're like on third, three stripe, I think? Three stripe, yeah. Three stripe, yeah. So that, uh, yeah. So that, that's all the guys. So the, the, the is, that front, the, is that the hotel? No, this is uh, now now in uh, Hammersmith. This is their, their, their current place now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which would, uh, road. Uh, very beautiful gym. You got to go there. There's a, there's a lot of guys. They're very, very welcoming. Uh, and it's, it, we, we went through a whole change, you know. We talked about sectarianism within jiu-jitsu. There was a bit yeah. of a split within our, our club when I was starting out. Some guys left, some guys came in. And credit to Simon and Dickie, who, who took on uh, officiating the club. Because before, it was very free-for-all. You turn up, sometimes you wouldn't have to pay anything. He's like, right, who's right. teaching? You know, we had Wilson's old instructor, Nelson. You know, he was there sometimes, some, sometimes he wasn't. So it was a bit, you know, hodgepodge, if you like. Yeah, yeah. But when they took it on, and it became Carson Gracie. The affiliation was there and our lineage. Obviously, we all had Carson Gracie lineage anyway. It became a club. It became, and it became a very, very uh, known club. It's quite, it's quite, you know, in, in the end. No, I know everyone that says Carson Gracie, they know that they're going to beat you up, love. It it's has like, a reputation. It was, it's that reputation. It has of, a reputation. And it's, uh, they'll it, screw you, know. you into the floor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they have to like <laughs> unscrew to get you out. Yeah. But yeah, it was so, so it was good. So then that, that's how I came across them, and you know, the they're still about history. now. Still about now, man. Yeah, they're, they're doing they're doing brilliantly. I'm very very I'm very very proud and to 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 have been associated with associated with them, and also having trained with Wilson. You know, he's again very dear to me because he taught me really a lot of nearly, all of my grappling has come from him. You know, in, in so, terms of jujitsu. So is he still here? Yeah. He's still here, still in, teaching. In the UK, yeah? Yeah, he's head instructor of Carson's, yeah. Okay. Still teaching. Yeah. He threatened to leave us quite a few times because uh, for the beaches of Brazil. And, yeah, that, uh, that makes sense, bro. Yeah, you know, yeah. every year, oh, I need some going back, man. I'm like, bro, you've been saying that for the last like 11 years, man. When are you going to go back? But so, he goes yeah. back, I'm guessing he goes back. He goes back every, yeah. every every so often, sees family and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, so yeah, no, it was interesting times. So. And how, what's the, do you, do you go off, do you, do you kind of uh, go back? So so now for or? me, uh, so alhamdulillah, I, I got my second degree just about two months ago from Carson Gracie yeah, Jr. Very, very so, Congratulations, uh, bro. Shukra, thank you. And um, How does that work, man? So it, uh, beyond Black Belt, I yeah. don't know how it works, so really. How, how does it work? Uh, so so, as, as, uh, again, subjectivity, there is no one single criteria by any instructor yeah. on who gets the belt and when and by what standard. The world over, I, I've done a, a lot of research into this and just looking and understanding people's different gradings and habits and oh, is it based on competition? Is it medals? Yeah. Is it how, attendance? What it what is it? And it's I, for, as far as I can tell, and a, a lot of you know, a lot of people kind of agree with this. And I'm, I, who am I to speak? But if you speak, to, if you speak to some people very pivotal in, in jiu-jitsu, they will tell you that there is no one criteria for any belt. So it's very much down to the instructor, how he sees you, how, and this is a, it's a, it's a very contentious problem, issue, because some people will, will feel uh, that they deserve a certain rank right. at a certain point because of their performance, maybe, you know, which is right. You know, if you're tapping out of, of purples, maybe you're a purple belt now. Yeah. If you're going to competitions and you're winning gold medals, that says a lot, definitely. But I think, and this is the angle that I, I this is certainly how I teach uh, my Jiu Jitsu. I, I would like people to understand what is it that it's doing for you in here? Because in as much as you're able to beat people on the mats, you're tapping them out, if you're not transforming yourself internally, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a major problem because it manifests in so many different ways. And that's why it's not the be all and end all to always be winning, to always be tapping people out, to always be, you know, uh, top of the hill or whatever it is and, 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 and just continue like that oftentimes the people who are like that who can't lose actually, uh, actually end up leaving the art they end up leaving and this is, uh, this is endemic in terms of what I find in, in Muslim communities and, and others is that people actually give up when it becomes uh, too hard is that you know they either they lose they can't believe they've lost, and it becomes. I remember you had your your, your, your last, uh, I don't think it's the last podcast, but one of the podcasts, the, the brother that was here, you he mentioned, you know, that that feeling of when he lost, he kind of went into a depression. Yeah, yeah. and that that happens, you know, and that, that's that's a serious problem as well. Then you've got people who you know have been doing it for years, and they you know, competition, and then all of a sudden it doesn't go well for them, or 
they're no longer that guy in the gym. You know, you were tapping everyone out for years. You know, I remember feeling like that. I was there and I felt really good yeah, being a, a strong, you know, blue belt when I was single. And then purple belt, <laughs> <laughs> got married, kids came along. And I, you're not that top dog anymore. And you're like, oh man, these guys are giving me a hard time. I don't think I'll turn up anymore. You know, my, my friend Simon, he'll, he'll, he'll talk about blue beltitis. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you know, that, that, that's a, it's a real thing. That happened, and, I, and, and now being an instructor, I see that so often with my, with my students that the minute that they get their grade or something else, it becomes harder for them. And it should be because it's, it's, it's a weight, it's a responsibility. But that is a time that we should continue to train. It's a time that we continue to give ourselves to the art because of what it teaches us. And this is why I feel that jiu-jitsu, the grappling arts in general, they, they in themselves inculcate humility. They allow you very in a very real and a very uh, dramatic way, uh, allow you to confront your ego in ways that you know, team sports, other individual sports simply don't. Um, I didn't mention to you, Muhammad. I, I, I'm working on a book. Inshallah, it'll be. I uh, wanted to bring this up. Actually, yeah. I wanted to bring this up, but I wanted to t- talk about this thing that we yeah. were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, this uh, uh, is a juicy black belt. Child, uh, child, Ch- 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 Terra. Ch- What's his name? Remember? Kyle Ch- 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 Terra. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I trained with his uh, his his instructor. In so so his instructor was he was speaking about when he got his black belt. Yeah. I don't know if you, you remember this story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about it? Actually, you you, you can bring it up. Sraj, I mean, you mentioned you mentioned the story. Okay, so the story basically was that he was winning uh, as he was a very good brown belt, and like he's winning competition after competition, right? And his and he was expecting to get his black belt, but his his instructor never gave it to him. And then one competition he lost, and he was crying on the mat. Uh, I think he was very upset. And then his that's when his instructor gave him the black belt. And uh, he was talking about it. He was actually getting very quite emotional. And um, I can't remember. What did, his, what did his coach say to him? Do you remember? He said something I like... Did, I, um, I, I saw the video. Like, I saw that you're... Co- like, he goes, Jiu-Jitsu is not about winning like, the podium. It's about what, like what you just said. It's about inside. It's inside. All, like you, you, you got overconfident. Mm-hmm. But at the moment, like... It, I can't remember exactly what... It was something along... I don't know. I can't quote him. Mm-hmm. But it was something along the lines of... He was getting too gassed, basically. That's basically it, yeah, and I see. Well, I see it in a gym as well. I see it sometimes, and unfortunately, young men, you get to a certain age in your twenties, and mashallah, you've got your your strength, but sometimes you don't have this, and you see an obstacle, you want to drive right through it, yeah. Um, and everyone's got different characters, right? So, I know when I teach, especially kids, there's kids that are quiet. That for you, you have to praise them. You have yeah. to, and there's some kids that you have to need smack. They need the smacking down, bro. Yeah. They need to get not beaten down, no, but humbled you, a little. Yeah, you need to get humbled. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, there's there's a balance. So it's kind of like that's what martial arts does for you. Martial arts, if if you're if you're shy, it it makes you bold or makes you kind confident. of confident. If you're t- overconfident, it will humble you. Yeah. So it's kind of like that's, that's why it's so beautiful. And that's why I, I I feel like a lot of Muslims, it does marry up a lot with our faith. Absolutely. There's so many parallels. So many Islam parallels, exactly. And, 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 Which leads uh, us w. nicely to what your your book, because I heard you speak about it on I think it was the last podcast you, um, that I listened to. Um, yeah, but if you want to talk a bit about, have you finished it or what's going yeah, on? So I'm, I'm looking yeah, to buy it's it, bro. It's actually yeah, yeah. It's, it's with the publishers now. It's being typesetted. So oh, what does yeah, that mean? Like So basically, they, they put it like I've given them this, the manuscript, and they put it nicely into like paragraphs and oh, nicely okay, shaped right. into a, a book. It's and like, did you do it? Did you like work that. on it yourself? I or? did myself. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 so it's actually a, a two-part book. Right. Uh, a, a part of it has been translated. So um, there is a very famous, celebrated scholar of our heritage, um, Imam Suyuti, Rahimullah Taala. Yeah, yeah, so he wrote a book. Uh, it's a booklet actually. Uh, Al uh, Musara Al Musara, and it was what we translate as as hastening or, or quickening or swiftly to wrestling. And what he did was he collated uh, some eighteen hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions, and um, uh, and they're wrestling. And it's not very, uh, it's not overly descriptive. There's no techniques in it. There's nothing like that. But what it does is it, it, it highlights to us the importance, of the centrality of grappling. Uh, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu at the time of the companions, and really what it did to them, and how it was very much a part of who they were. 
they were men that that you know they they were archers they were wrestlers they were people who knew how to use the sword they lived a very rough and you know coarse existence and it's something that i think a lot of muslims tend to forget there are elements of it that relate to their circumstance there's elements that relate to their geography where they were in arabia but also of who they were as men as people and this is something that uh, is being missed and how also it informs us as spiritual beings you can speak to and i know uh, kauter's uh, instructor his name is paulo maurizio strausch he i trained with him extensively in in brazil and he is a deeply humble spiritual person and he's somebody that you know outside of jiu jitsu he's like a, he's he's a coral belt so he's a black and red belt uh and he's somebody that you can learn uh from on and off the mat i remember i was in in rio and um I'm not going to spell it out to you but you can imagine the type of environment that you're in yeah, yeah, when you're in Rio de Janeiro yeah the kind of uh, yeah. you know uh, scantily dressed yeah. uh, women that carnival around, carnival yeah. all the rest of it right so I remember I was there training and he, he kind of gathered from my 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 disposition I'd break away for, for prayers and whatever that I wasn't really buying into that whole culture I simply came to train yeah so he said Nisa you know your eyes when you walk out of here don't look everywhere <laughs> Let's look down. And I, 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 for me, as, as a, you know, as a, as a, as a believer, I yeah. was fun, you know, keeping our gaze down. Yeah, and, you know, and he, he was very much about that. So when, like you, you just mentioned the story about Kaltera, when it was only when he lost that he was actually ready to receive his yes, back belt. Yes. It's something that we have to reflect on in terms of how we look at our progression through martial arts. Is it simply to beat people? Is it simply to win? Is it simply to get the medals? Or is there something deeper? And this is what I I I talk about a little bit in the very little because it's actually part of three books that we're working on is that what is it that the martial arts of Islam I would say the sunnah the prophetic arts the likes of wrestling grappling um uh, swordsmanship archery horse riding uh these these type of art traditional arts what is it that they give us above and beyond uh just the outward yeah you could be great at art great at archery you could be you know uh, a great grappler but what does it tell us about ourselves so this is what we go in into a little bit in 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 the book in terms of discussing these elements what are the objectives for us uh to to train these arts yeah. and i feel a lot of people kind of um can relate to that but also lose the the intention as to why they go into jiu jitsu wrestling sambo yeah. you know whatever else we we're, we're doing so i think this is really really important so you know in the book we 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 take imam suyuti's text we had that translated so i'm the last part of the book you, you can read the, the narrations and can i have, I have a request though from you yeah. please yeah can we sort out an audio book <laughs> He's not a reader, is he? No, you have to read it, though, bro. Oh. You've got to read no, it. No, no I'm, I'm being serious, no, bro. Voice, bro. No, no, Nisa, <laughs> wallahi, I'm being serious, yeah? Okay. We will record it for you, bro. That's a nice offer, man. I'm being serious, bro. <laughs> yeah. Wallahi. Okay. Uh, because I think audiobooks, mm. yes, read a book, have a book. Sure. Imagine you're on a long journey. No, makes sense. I, yeah. It's yeah. A, just another medium for, and Absolutely. we're happy to produce it, bro. And, and, and I've actually yeah. been looking at it. And other... Islamic texts sure. yeah and just texts that are read because we don't have anything on an audio book kind of sure. platform yeah no you're right, you're right you can have a book it's not a problem yeah. but, like, you know, there's a lot of people it, that yeah. will want to read the book yeah. I would want to read it sure, yeah. and now oh, you're right I'm not a reader but sure. I don't read yeah. like uh, I know it's going to sound ignorant yeah but I don't know I just had this phobia of reading bro. I don't know <laughs> what it is but I'm like audio books I've listened to so many and, and there's cyclists out there bro yeah and I like cycle the, and, and when I'm when I'm training I don't listen to music it's right really interesting, so Muhammad, you, uh, you, so I cut art. you up bro but no, I, I no, thought that no. was so important to no kind of, but uh, I, I'm so glad you did you're such an articulate person I'm just saying this don't don't, don't you know no, I'm you, not gonna get you're able to, to, to walk out the door Allah, and you can <laughs> dash that, that there's a plant there with dirt in it you can dash it in my face but you're so articulate you're so intelligent and I've seen the podcast that you do and you you're claiming that you don't read that shows the power of the very the audio the, or, yeah. the, the oration that you're you're hearing so th- there is there is definitely benefit in in having audio books and and, and I believe you should there. read and if this is yeah. something that in the coming year I'm trying mm-hmm. to because every year I try and push myself Excellent. and um you know reading there's there's there, there is a what's the word there's a sweetness in it mm-hmm. and my wife reads a lot mm-hmm. and I'm jealous when I see her sit down with a book she's very engrossed in it mm-hmm. and And there's that 
you know, barbarian oaf. Like all I can do is watch and listen. But it, I, I don't know why. Why I think I think as a young man when I was in school, I would I, maybe I was dyslexic. Cause I had a lot, a lot of alum, yeah. But I would skip lines and I'd get confused and stuff. Possibly, possibly. My, Who knows? My, my oldest son is Musa is, mm. is, is, is uh, slightly dyslexic. So I've never had the test, but but listening, I, I was I was like I didn't want to stop myself from learning from learning. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get. T- I, d- I have read books. I, and the thing is, it's, it's an awakening. It's not something yeah. that happens straight away it's a bit like grappling yes, you know I mean? yes you're not going to gravitate to you know that first day you get choked out silly and you're just yeah. there and you're like oh i want to do this again yeah it's like picking up that book and you're like you're dozing up and like oh i, I can't make sense yeah, yeah especially when you read man you yeah. get tired so it doesn't, sleepy. Matter, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter how interesting that book is you're still gonna yeah. you're just the text the, the actual yeah. grammar and the reading part of it Can be, uh, yeah i mean i read articles i read but it's like you know when you sit down and, and i mean maybe there's an attention problem or something whatever but like i I said that this is something because I've been looking for a project like this. We've got all the equipment. No, so, um, so I thought, you know what? Like it'd be a good project to kind of come really? in maybe once. Between There's you, bro. It's month. between you and Stephen Fry to read it, man. That's so, it, bro. It's up to you. <laughs> now you've got the voice, <laughs> and we could do it. We could yeah. come once a month, or whatever. We'd sit down sure. and you could just read through it. Uh, take you. And then we'll it. edit it and stuff. Uh, it's uh, not. Uh, take you up on that. Often. And then we can stick yeah. it on Amazon and yeah, excellent. Inshallah. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Very kind of you. I'm yeah. happy to do that. But yeah, so, when yeah. you talked about this, so I know you mentioned it on another podcast, but I was like, no, that's such a really good project, man, because. I've always wondered because wrestling has always been mentioned. Yeah, wrestle, right. but it's, I've never seen a text yes. that kind of uh, well, not in English me. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is the first time that this is, this work has been translated into, into English. It's also uh, I I did the annotation myself. So the actual Arabic text was done by uh, Mufti Muhammad Aman. He's from Norway. Uh, shout out to him because he did that uh, translation just in the month of Ramadan. Much very very nice, uh, sure. very uh, incredible. So you scholar. said it was a booklet. So it was a booklet in terms of what you know how you know the scholars of old when they would look at that. This is eighteen hadith. This is nothing for them. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? This is not light work. This is light work. It's like you know. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Imam Suyuti famously, you know, he wrote so many, yeah. so many hundreds of books. He wrote books on cats. You know, the book on cats. Zach you know, would like that book. Yeah, I'd love that book, bro. Yeah. yeah, he loves cats, man. He loves cats. So you know, again, the virtues of cats and the, 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 no the, the presence. Of, yeah, in, in, in the cats of Medina. You know, very interesting. So um, we did that translation, but what we found was that it wasn't very appealing. You read it and you're like, okay, yeah, mashallah. The Prophet has a lot of references, 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 and, references and, like yeah, okay, yeah. it's a bit dr- like it's not it's not appealing to people. So what we had to do was give it a bit of an annotation. So okay, what does that mean? So it's just kind of just. So fleshing it out, fleshing a it out bit. a bit. Yeah. You know, put some notes around it. Okay, cool. Yeah, we, we know that they wrestled. Where did they wrestle? How? What kind of rule set? And a lot of that stuff comes from other texts. It's right. not in the hadith. It's in, the, in commentaries. And it's in, in, in the tabaqat. When you read uh, historical books in you know in the histories of Islam, you'll find that actually it was it was the mainstay for the Muslims. It was at every every uh, you know uh, caliphate. It was oh, there right. as a pre- you know it was it, so. It's almost as though it was so obvious that they wrestled that they didn't even speak about it. Oh. That made sense, yeah. So it was such a cool Can you give part us a little snippet, bro. Like some a little, a little kind of uh, extract. I'm mean, obviously not not from memory. Yeah. Something that kind of interesting, kind of. Uh, um, I'm sure the whole book's interesting, but something. No, that I don't think the book. I, I, I'm I pretty think, sure it I is because I'm already I, intrigued. I, when is it out, bro? So, inshallah, we're doing the book launch in January the twentieth. So it's happening at Royal Holloway University. So I'm hoping that oh, I'm hoping that it's going to be ready by then. Um, but yeah, I, in terms of a snippet, I, I I don't know. You know, I think what we what what. So a second part of this book is. Sure, I'll put you on the spot, bro. No, no, no. It's fine. It's just I'm, there's so many things <laughs> yeah, going in my head. I'm like, yeah. yeah. The other part of this book is actually understanding why uh, Muslims would ever do sports. So I'm saying. Right. What are the objectives of sport in Islam? Right, so it's not a, a, a theological discussion. It's not to say halal haram. It's none of right, that discussion. Right. It's really why would you do something? You know, like when you take something on, you is You know, you play basketball, play football, tennis, whatever else you want to do. But why would you want to do that? What is the objective of doing it? So in Islam, the scholars have articulated, and this is what I, I kind of amalgamate, I, I bring together, are kind of five basic objectives. And the primary objective, and make no mistake about it was military function. Yeah. When you were in, in a battle, the reason you would do wrestling, archery, these type of things, horse riding, was so that you could galvanize your army and fight in war. That's just period. I, you know, that's every no, martial art though. Yeah, exactly. That's the, the like, core. Uh, that judo, judo, jiu-jitsu, whatever. It's from for samurai, they used to use it on the... 
on the battlefield, the battlefield. right? That's, that's what martial arts is. Basically. So uh, you know, yeah. some people like to romanticize about, yeah. oh no, it's enlightened. But no, yeah. it was to fight. It was for war. Okay. So and also, quote me if I'm wrong. A lot of martial arts were diluted yeah. by colonial forces, and 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 at, like for example, in Japan, karate came from the fact that the Okinawans weren't allowed to use weapons and weren't allowed to kind of... Uh, so they had to distill the... They had to do... Like Capoeira, same thing. Mm. So Capoeira, they had to do it in dance because they didn't want... The, the occupying force, the Portuguese, mm. sure. saw the natives like uh, training, innit? So, okay. so if they did it in a, in a dance form, then they wouldn't look as uh, threatening sure. or whatever. Sure. Does that Just, make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I bet you, even from this conversation, uh, someone who is not like... Understanding, they might. Oh my! Are these guys militarizing uh, oh, martial arts and stuff? Does that make sense? Yeah, but yeah. really and truly, the essence of martial yes, arts. Yes, that's what it is. What you it can't is. get. Yeah, you can't, you can't get away around it. Can't get away yeah, around yeah. it. So that's what martial this arts is. This is exactly yeah. the point. Yeah. So tied with that, so you had you know military function. Yeah. And then tied with that was self defense. Another reason why you would do something yeah. uh, sports or uh, some sort of physical activity uh, in Islam would be to defend yourself. Yeah? Yeah. So there's a very clear hadith on on, on that. Then there's there's things like al um, itqan something that would uh, what we, we translated as as skillful mastery now uh, there's a hadith to the effect that Allah God loves uh, uh, those who do who do something skillfully or through mastery you know who takes on a task and does something skillfully so you would you would undertake like the art of archery is a very good example of that that you would take it on to master it you know and the Muslims had that about themselves you remind me of uh, the last samurai man have Ooh, you seen that yes man it's got to be the best film of all time, man. And there's, there's the segment. You know that segment when they talk about when when there's a scene where they're making tea. He goes about the, the there's a word that they use the Japanese. Um, Subhanallah, it, it, it escapes me, but it's, it's almost like Ahsan. Ahsan. Exactly. Yeah, Ahsan is, Ahsan is yeah, very similar. Exactly. Yes. yes, yes so yeah. so they the samurai have this word. Yeah. So it means perfection in every way. Every way. That's so right. when you pour a cup of, they, they have the tea ceremony when they pour, known, yeah. when they when they're doing archery, archery yeah, when yeah. they yes, yeah, very very similar. Exactly. And and any nation would have this. Yeah. The Native yeah. Americans did the same thing. You know, they would they would war, war was their lifestyle. Like, I mean, they would defend themselves against other tribes and obviously the invaders, whatever it is. But yeah, it, when you said that, it just reminded me of that scene from the Last Samurai when. You know when they've captured him and they yeah, bring him into bring the him village, aside, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and so, he's commentating on it; like yeah. it was very interesting. No, yeah. definitely. It's, it's that, it's that I watch it at least actually. once a year. Right? Same, same, yeah, same, yeah. man. Yeah, it's definitely odd. My, my wife will always say, "Oh, I'm not that kind again." Oh, Rugren, Bob, Sake, yeah. And Bob, Bob's my favorite Bob's, character. Bob's bro. a G, man. Yeah, he's a G, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he reminds me of. He reminds me of. You know when the guy's shouting and he comes out like yeah, with the, with the sword? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah like, what's, what's going on here, Exactly. Man? It reminds me of narrations of Abu Khattab. Yeah, you can imagine him normal. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, wait, uh, watch your mouth, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it back in. <laughs> he's always been taught to sheath his sword, bro. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and he's the one who takes him at the end in the war, like in the, in the battle, if you see it, like the last samurai. Yes. He's the one who sacrifices himself for That's correct. Tom yeah. Cruise, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Very interesting story, man. So, yeah. So, so that was that, that element. There's also an element of social and uh, recreational cohesion. So that the reasons why, and this is this is known throughout the Muslim world. You go to the Ottomans, you know, even now you, 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 we talk about Dagestan and we talk Chechnya yeah. and these places. They had a culture of sport embedded in their social in their Fabric, setting. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in the setting, you know. So at weddings, uh, you know, uh, at gatherings, you come together, reciting Quran, whatever it is, as a haraka. You would have wrestlers, you would have archers that would come together. So an element, an objective of why you would do sport would be the social uh, and recreational cohesion within the community. Another element uh, was what was referred to as kind of a, um, we translated as refreshment of the soul, refreshment of the heart. So you can imagine at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions, very much given to worship. You know, so for many of you, you know, uh, perhaps aren't sharing our faith, um, you know, uh, uh, people of of great worship who give themselves to litanies and recitation and staying up the entire night in prayer um, there's an element of which which uh, of that that can tax the inner soul beyond uh, your 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 kind of normal daily worship so when it's really taxing that like i want to ask you bro like in the month of ramadan when you read quran and how much how intense you yeah. intensely you're reading it 
it can actually be quite hard, you know, and you're like, oh man, I need to have a bit of a break, you know. Yeah, and yeah. It's not because you want to stop, but it's like physically, it's quite, you can't continue. It's like doing yeah. a thousand push ups or yeah, like exactly. You need to kind of like, I, need, I, need, to, I need to just change it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you would do this so to take away from to your, break it up, to break it up, yeah. You know, Sa'at and Sa'at, and the Prophet yeah. said in a, in a hadith that he would, there's a time for this, and there's a time for that. And that was one objective that actually they would take to the archery, archery field, they would take to the bow. They would wrestle in the, in, in the roda and they would uh, just engage, just to refresh themselves, you know, from all that the worship that they would engage in. So um, these are some some objectives of, of that, that were mentioned, and then we've got them in the book. Uh, there's another book that we're working on, which is um, a personal narrative of mine, kind of martial arts journey. But then what we're proposing in that book is this point that uh, we're trying to come onto is what the martial arts can do for ourselves for our character for us as people and this kind of you know if i can use this transcends kind of maybe you know religious values yeah. perspectives um you know for, for a us, human, yeah. humanistic level. kind of like yeah. um just something that we can all as as, uh, as 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 humans we can all understand and appreciate that what to be a better person and it's been my experience in 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 the, in the Jiu Jitsu community in the clubs that I train at, and I've you know I've gone around the world. I've, I've trained in Japan. I've trained in, in Brazil. I've been to America, California. You know, I've done all of that. There is something that we connect with on on the mats, and what is that thing? And that 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 is something that we there's an understanding. There's an unwritten understanding, an unwritten rule of how we conduct ourselves, and then also how we conduct ourselves off of the mat. You know how we we we, we we talk sometimes it's difficult because some gyms don't they don't they don't have that they're, they're very brash they're, you know vulgarities are spoken and you know there, there's no there's no concern for the other but when you do a certain martial art and it humbles you it puts you in a space some of the most humblest people i've met are martial artists people who've you know you know uh, mma fighters that you can really speak to them on a level they're really, you know, they're very in tune with themselves mm. about who they really are, and they know themselves very, very well. And this is the appeal that martial arts can have, and you know, uh, I think it's, it's important to, to to think about. So, kind of another objective of why you would want to, you know, do wrestling, grappling, jujitsu, whatever else, is to refine the self. You know, refine yourself as as, as people. Subhanallah, that is because um, you know, it is it's like even myself as a you know, training and stuff like that is, um, you know, everyone's got their own character, right? Like they, they've got their own um, obstacles they have to come over. Yes. Yeah. And something I'm not ashamed to kind of speak of it in, in, in public is that I have a problem with being aggressive. Yeah. So what I mean by that is sometimes I allow I don't, I'm not aggressive enough. And then you have that repercussion of, I wasn't aggressive enough. Does that make sense? So yeah, you, you've maybe been in a, in a role or something or, yeah. or, or, and you might have been given up a position because you wasn't aggressive enough, right? And then there's a, and then if, if, if you don't watch yourself, the next role, you might hurt someone. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm always conscious of that when I'm training and I feel like, I, especially the last year or so since I've got injured, when I'm rolling is I'm very conscious that I'm injured and I have a handicap. Does that make sense mm -hmm. almost? Mm -hmm. So there's that kind of inner dialogue that's happening in my brain when I'm rolling. And that's something that never happened when I was doing striking, when I was younger. This is happening in my old in my career, not our career, but in my in journey in, the in my arts. journey in martial arts now, which is I've never ever thought of martial arts in my head as in something that is trying to fight myself. And that's something that I'm looking at because at the moment, I mean, I, I'll tell you why I train martial arts and why I'm so involved. It's got nothing to do with fighting. And that's, I, I realize that. And I look at martial art as a tool, really, because everything that I've done so far in my life in the last, I would say since I've become a, a father, yeah, was to make a life, to make a world better for my children. Mm. And not just my children, the, my friends' children, my community's children. But obviously, if I ignore my own children, what does that say about my community, right? So it starts from my family That's first. And then it, so anything that I do right now 
is, and I'm sure it's, it's when you have a child, and those people that are listening, those guys that are listening, because pro- predominantly male audience, right, who are just had babies, are becoming fathers, just got married, right? When you have a child, whether it be a boy or a girl, yeah, as a man, you change. And that change happens instantly. Mm. It's not something that happens slowly. Immediately, when that baby is out, your brain just changes. And what? And I've, I've spoken, I've, I don't know about you, but I know for myself, it's I need to make the world safer. That's the root of it, right? Mm. And it sounds like the superhero complex, but as a father, that's what you want to do for your kids. You want to make this Absolutely. world safe. So that's number one. And you want, ultimately for me, I want to be like with my children in, in heaven, bro. That makes sense. When you boil it down to kind of, you want to be with your loved ones, right? Because this world is, we haven't talked much about religion on the podcast yeah. but this is something that guides us. Yeah. And that's something that drives us through everything that we do, right? It's a thread through. It's a thread through, right? So there's no go, uh, there's no beating around the bush. Mm. And for me, it's I want to be with my family and my um, and my loved ones and forever. And for me to do that, I need to guide them. I'm their shepherd, right? Mm. Yeah. That's 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 the reality. So even the guys at the gym, the people that I'm around around me, the guys that we we work with. I don't associate pe- with people that don't have that goal. Mm. Wallahi, seriously, I don't want to know you if you don't want to make a better world for the next generation. Muslim or not Muslim, I don't. It, that doesn't matter to me. Yeah, but if you're not making something better, then what are you doing? Eating, sleeping, enjoying yourself, and doing what? So I'm not interested in that. The, the whole point of this podcast is that, Beautiful. is to show something else, right? So, and for me, the deen of Islam and martial arts, if, if, if martial arts was going against my faith, I wouldn't do it. Why would I do it? But unfortunately, what I'm seeing, and I know we, we speak about this a lot, Imran, right? And, and Zach, there's a lot of brothers that are coming to do martial arts that have got the wrong intention. That comes down to intention. And does, that, does that make sense? I, I, or you haven't controlled that wild horse inside you. Hmm. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Like, are you there to hurt people? If you're there to hurt people, this is the wrong place. Mm-hmm. It's not. Even mm-hmm. I remember, like, to go back to the last samurai. Do you remember that bit where they catch? And if you haven't seen it, it's probably a good idea to go and watch it. That's it's it, a very man. good film. A, and if you're a martial artist, well, that nice. is martial arts, man. Yeah. yeah. Some people would, would argue against it because they, they know the, 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 the history and the, the Japanese. There are some Japanese originals that were done uh, in the same vein, but carry on, bro. Yeah, yeah. there's the Seven Samurai yeah, yeah, and there's, there's a few different a few ones, adults, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But contemporary, like yeah. something... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. That we could all access. And 100%, yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, so there was one scene when they caught an enemy combatant, right? Mm. Do you remember one of the... The guy with the silver hair. Mm. Uh, he was a samurai, but he was working with the emperor yeah. against yeah. the samurai. Yeah. It was funny because they're, they're kind of like from the same... Anyway. The opening scene. I, I remember when scene. they were about to yeah. behead him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously the, um, Tom Cruise sees mm. and that right. guy got uh, beheaded like mm. for an unarmed, unarmed soldier. This is something against... Obviously in the end, you find out that he asked for it because yes. for them, it's an honor to, to die. To die yeah. And he... And imagine he... The guy that beheaded him, it was an honor for him. Does that make sense to offer him that honorable death? But obviously, this whole thing is messy when you look at it in the outskirts. But to, I'm not saying go out and you know do, do this thing. I'm, I'm, what, what, what I'm trying to say is the warrior's way. It's not personal, you know. Like um, you look at what's hap- what happened in Iraq and soldiers who've invaded and and committed atrocities, and they don't follow these kind of like because you. War is, is ugly, w- whether we like it or not, right? Com- fighting is ugly. It's not something that is... Conflict is, a, is ugly. Conflict is ugly, exactly. Mm-hmm. But martial arts has made it in a way which is we can train something mm-hmm. and take out the ugliness. Mm-hmm. And reap the rewards and of that. And reap the that, rewards that, that, that of that. Training. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But the problem is if you come into the mat and you have takabbo, this is the biggest problem. Oh. 
is the is the to, to translate takabur meaning um, what's close. the best uh, I, 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 I arrogance like takabur, arrogance a type of pride like pride a, yeah, kind of a, so if martial arts is gonna make, that's then you you don't understand martial arts then you've missed the, you've missed you've the whole missed the point whole point and yeah this uh, th- this is very much why for me I can continue to train because I I find that I am uh, able to deal with what we call spiritual maladies you know like you just said yeah. and you know kibar in our hearts and you know we've got this riya we've got this ostentation ostentatiousness you know ourselves that we want to show off we want to look a certain yeah. way be a certain thing but in reality um, these arts teach us the opposite, opposite of that yeah. it's like replacing vice with virtue yeah. and that's really what we want to want to do is that when when the guy comes to the gym and he's got to be oh, bro, I want to smash you I want to oh, you know you've got all that bro, you need to chill because if that's your intention yeah it's going to be short lived and everybody you know you know nobody likes the arrogant person you know that we all know that and it's it's sad because sometimes you know we we have we have many elements of that within ourselves and it, it takes a long time to kind of sift ourselves up. it's a continual process you know it's, it's something that we've got to got to purify ourselves of a lot constantly and it's something that happens on the mats all the time but i i find again you know in the muslim communities and other places they, they don't see that they come in from a different perspective they come in with the, the glitz the glamour the mma scene the whole yeah. thing and, it, and, it, and that's with, that's why for me i know like i'm not i'm I have mixed feelings about MMA. Oh, me too. I love it, yeah. but I also hate it as well. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, it's introduced this whole new generation to martial arts where we were introduced from it from a traditional perspective. Say what you will about traditional martial arts. But this is one element. But it's one element that hasn't... Like, you look at some MMA gyms, mm. I would never want to train there. Do you know what I'm saying? Different, it's it's. Different. I was speaking to Khalid uh, the other day. We were looking at you know do some research online, and we we're going through different, you know, different uh, content from different people, and we were looking at one specific guy who was creating content for his gym and stuff. And I was looking like they had like behind the scenes stuff. Sure, yeah. And I was like, imagine being in that gym. Like it was like I don't know. It was the environment was very toxic. Toxic environment. Absolutely, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it, you know, it's a, there's a state of depravity when you go in there and you think, okay, yeah, you know how to throw a punch, you know how to throw a kick, you can take them down, you can beat the hell out of each other. But then but what? Beyond that, you, you know, you're, you're, you're mean, horrid, you know, disgraceful people. You, you know, like your, 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 your moral compass is skewed because you've not taken on the traditional yes. values of what martial arts traditionally have always upheld. And that's, that, that, that is so critical to how yeah. I think, you know, not just Muslims, but everybody should be approaching martial arts with, is with with, the, with these these kind of thoughts and understanding traditional values and understanding that it, it is certainly a, a way into the self, you know, like knowing yourself truly and becoming better people. Honestly, you know, it's just as simple as that. You know, you yeah. can go to the gym. You know, I went to California and I was there and I went to some of the biggest names in jiu-jitsu, their clubs, and I went there. And frankly, their the club stank. What, stank because like it smelled like yeah, a bit bo in it, <laughs> but they stank because their attitude stank. You know of how they looked at things. They, all they cared about was the gold, yeah. the champion, the one who's who's on top. What about that kid who can't do a forward roll? Yeah. What about that guy who's now fifty six years old and will take something up? What about that girl who's just been beaten up at school? You know what yeah. I mean? I mean? It's very very important. Shukran Thank you. It's really really important, and and for us as anything, Akhi, bro. Sorry? You don't like it, no? No, I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. I'm just chatting away too much. Yeah. Man. Just talking to me, bro. He's sipping it through, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. So it's just like, um, you, we, we have to, I think this, this is the starting point. And if we miss that, we've missed the entire yeah. uh, understanding of what these martial arts can, can teach us. 100%. So, you know, yeah. and, and I think, which leads me, we kind of spoke about it a little bit on the phone, which there are a lot of brothers that have set up academies, right? And for for one for one reason or another you might not agree with another academy or you've had a relationship with someone and 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 some so something's happened and you've separated or whatever yeah and and this is to 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 to, to advice to myself and to everyone who is listening who who might have had an issue with islam first then jiu jitsu bro do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, well, like, honestly, we have to, we have to, and this is something that I hate about it. 
There's something I hate about running from a gym. Politics. It's, it's because we've had, we've had people come to us or come to people that we know mm -hmm. and have said very hurtful things, yeah, on the outskirts. But the way they don't understand is we're all brothers though. <laughs> you just told me a whole story about how you were not accepted, right? How you never felt welcome. And when now we've created space where we are welcome, now we're looking at things that we're, we're trying to make other people, it just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's and it's so. I was speaking to a brother yesterday. I think um, uh, he wants to come train with us, but he's he he doesn't want to upset his his teacher and this and that. And I was like, you know what? This it's like it has to stop somewhere, isn't it? We've so, become like this hundred year war where mm -hmm. over what nothing. So a message then maybe to instructors. Yeah? yeah, a message is that in as much as we can, let's not inherit the sectarianism of what we have witnessed ourselves. Yeah. Look, man, I, you know, I came from Carlson Gracie team. It was very much, you know, our way, or, you know, no other clubs would be, and it's it's there, it's but rifled but in. Can I say something, yeah. uh, Nizo? Sorry to cut no, you no, off. No. Well, what, because one wanted to kind of have rivalry. Well, there's nothing wrong yeah, with that. Competitive, yeah, competition is important. You yeah, know what? You do, yeah. But don't, like, there needs to be some sort of, um, but even like you look at those old films where they go to battle, right? Mm. And they, they, there's two, you know, like they, they, they have a civil conversation, yeah, right? Yeah. And then when it's time to go, you go in it. Yeah. But like that, that's not even happening. No. Yeah. And on top of that, what's happening is just, how, how do you say it? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just unnecessary kalam, bro. Yeah, absolutely. It's unnecessary what? talk that it's just going to, First is Allah is Allah going to be happy with you by support, but but doing, you just can you forgive that per, even that person wronged you yeah sure. can you forgive that person okay you can forgive that person but maybe you can't be their friend fine that's cool. not a that's problem, not a problem either cool. you can you go there yeah. but but don't say bad words about that person and even Keep if it, someone comes to you and tells you something about someone say, I don't want to hear I don't want to hear it don't, it. Hear it. don't engage don't, in don't that bring talk that you might not yeah. agree with that person but remember. Mm. They bleed just like you. And, and also, there's a brotherhood here, which is important. There's a khuwa that a we, khuwa, we have to uphold. Which, yes. This, this, you know, this is a priority. You know, of anything else, we can drop everything, drop the belts, drop the yeah. belt. That, that, That's that the brotherhood priority. is really much. And that hurts me, bro, because I've heard yeah. I'm not involved in all that, right? Yeah. That's good. I don't, yeah. I don't want to hear it yeah, and absolutely. I don't want to yeah. think. But sometimes we get word back. So, you know, some people love to bring word back, yeah? And obviously, it hurts your feelings and all this type of stuff. But you know what you think to yourself? I want all of us to be together, man. Mm -hmm. I don't want us to be separate, man. Do you understand? Yeah. Like we're separate and, and mashallah, this martial arts in the UK, especially in London, is flourishing, flourishing yeah. amongst our communities. There's guys that are mashallah, getting there, you know, ranked and, you know, doing really good things. And why are we kind of looking for I, ways I, I, of... I, I think it stems down to a lot of personal insecurities. Yeah. There are some things that, you know, like, and I had that. I remember, I remember very early on, like, you know, uh, one of my friends saying to me, oh, man, you know, you're, you're the first Muslim this and you're the first brown that yeah. and the Indian this. And, that. and I, I kind of, I didn't like that kind of talk. I'm like, let's leave that. We're just, we're all yeah. one. We're all just, you know, whatever achievements we have. And when we have those insecurities of like, being a certain thing and then somebody then encroaching on our space. So, you know, another brother opens up a gym down the corner. Like, oh, bro, what are you doing? You know, it's like, yeah. well, why is that a problem? You know what I mean? Let, 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 I think if we have an insecurity about, you know, again, someone beating us, being better than us, that's something we have to get over. You know, we have but to I think I think a lot of it stems from sometimes you're in the relationship with that person, right? Those are the so, tough ones. Yeah. Those are the tough ones. Those are the hard ones. So it yeah. becomes personal, right? Yeah. And you have a relationship with that person and it go like for, for some reason or other, you, you kind of separate. Okay, khalas, that's fine. Yeah. But, and you can, you don't have to see eye to eye, you can separate. But one thing that you should do is remember that's still your, that's still your brother, mm -hmm. number one. You don't have to be their friend. Okay, you know when you get older, you know when you're younger, you want everyone to like you, but if you don't, not everyone's going to like you, bro. No, I don't like you. Get over <laughs> it. Just accept that. <laughs> that's standard, bro. I'm pretty sure there's people that watch me and think, this guy's a fool, bro. But, and runs hands going up. <laughs> <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying? No one, not everyone is going to like you. Yeah, I understand. But could you hold your tongue for for the sake of Allah? Can you do that? Can you just not say a bad word about that person? Yeah. Or refrain from saying anything? Because even amongst the Sahaba, there's disagreements, bro. Exactly. 
Exactly. You so can go. These are these examples that we should be looking at. Yeah. To. And if we can't accept them, then what? But they're united them, yeah. on one thing, right? So that's that's I think. And it, to take it out of the whole Islamic perspective, mm-hmm. even in jujitsu, mm-hmm. there's this, and it's rife. Yeah. And I feel that we, a lot we of should be really affecting jujitsu in a good way, not the jujitsu affecting us yeah. in in. So, in so a bad when it way. touches us sense? and we've embraced in jujitsu, we should be now making it better. So that actually, oh, you know, these guys have taken it on, and that's how, it. How they, you know, that's it. This now. this is it. So it's kind yeah. of like. Uh, it's something really close to my. I don't want. I want. I want people to be together, yeah. not separate. It's a very. It's, it's a very noble thing, and I, I. I wish the same, bro. I. I really want the same. Uh, it's. It's hard, and it takes a lot of self-sacrifice. It takes a lot of holding yeah. your tongue. Holding Sometimes your mouth. you have to just. The best yeah. thing to say is nothing. Nothing. I. I. There's a very. You know, a lot of my students and my friends and. Oh, you, don't, you don't have social media. You don't. It's for this very yeah, reason. You know, it's yeah. very, very difficult to do that. I know myself. I, I'm going to get upset if I see something, yeah. a comment or yeah. a picture. Or, oh, I don't, you know, just leave it. Let's just continue. We're on a journey. Let's just go. Let's just, you know, keep going. And, and, and those who genuinely want to, to, to go on this journey, they'll be there. And those who don't, they won't. And it's, that's, you know, and like you say, not everyone's going to like you. That If we can just accept that fact, I'm, I'm good with that. No what, what are you, so uh, another thing is that for, for things that are, I was never, I never thought about speaking about this, but I thought, you know, it's an opportunity. And like, for example, you, you, you're teaching a student, they get to a certain level mm. and then inevitably that student is going to break away from you, right? So th- th- this happens regularly in martial arts for time and memoriam. Man. Look, let's 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 martial let's arts let's styles have been created through, around, through, through splitting. <laughs> Just, I mean, the very classic, uh, I say, near to us in terms of time, yeah. not, 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 not more than 200 years ago, Jugaru Kano. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of what he did with his students, the the whole, you know, Kodokan, the, the understanding of Kosan Judo, yeah. the name was, yeah. you know, the, I think, again, I, I, Do I say... Do you think his, his, his teacher was happy with him? I don't know, man. I don't know. You know Who knows? Who knows? Or was he happy with Helio doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? I don't know, like uh, changing you know. it into... Allah Adam, what happened in the background? What I'm saying is that you see, you see, like, I feel that again, it comes down to insecurity. Let, let's just play this this thought out. Go on, go on. So you have a, you know some students that they come to you. You've been learning from they've been learning from you for some time, and now inevitably, which which can't happen if there's an age difference or there's a kind of difficult, you know, you, you you get injured, whatever, and now the student exceeds the teacher. Yeah, you can tap you out now, bro. How's that happening? Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with that? And this is where, again, it comes into that insecurity. Feel like, can I accept that? If I can't accept it, then it's a problem. And that, that's where yeah. I feel that a lot of times it, it, it's, it's where either students exceed the, the teacher. But then on the flip side, and I'm speaking to students now, is that we should also be uh, humbled and acknowledge the value that our teachers give us. So just because now you're at a point where you can beat the teacher doesn't mean that, right, that's it, I want to move on. And I, said, I, don't, I don't need this guy, I've forgotten, mm, you know. It, I think it's more than that though, Nizar. You know, mm, like I give you examples. So there's that element of yeah, it, yeah? yeah. Uh, but you didn't fall from a tree. Like my said, you didn't fall from a tree, yeah? You came from somewhere, right? Mm. But to completely ignore what your, your teacher's done for you. Yes. And I think the modern game where... I have no problem with students training other places and but there's a tarbiyah and how to do it. How to do it, yeah, exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? Like um like how you should like because a teacher, okay, he's he's taking fees, right? Those fees doesn't mean that you own him. Those fees allow him to dedicate his time to teaching you, right? And whatever you're paying him is not enough. Any teacher, because what you don't see outside the classroom, he's sitting there, he's watching footage, he's speaking to other instructors, he's reading, he's he's thinking about his student, he's worrying about them. Are they being it's like being a father, man? Yeah. Being a coach is like yeah, being a father. I tell my kids, Coach Amir, he's like your dad. On the mat, he's your father, man. That that's whatever he says, don't come to me. Don't ask me. He's your coach. So does it like would you abandon your father mm. when you get to a certain age and and just completely disown him and think nothing of him and this not is it. acknowledge his contribution to this your is life? it bro yeah. yeah you're gonna go and live your own life and do your own thing, do your own thing. Absolutely. but do you get to a point where you dis, 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 disown your father man? Mm. and subhanallah that's that's imp- and how are you gonna carry on your life 
How, how, how you, what does that say about you as a person where you've just ignored completely everything that's happened mm -hmm. and all the good? And sometimes people have this disability where they don't see, they, they don't see the, like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm your student for 15 years. They don't see it as that. They're just, because one, one year rolls into another, rolls into another, but you're building this relationship with that person. But maybe you're, as a student, in a, I remember someone telling me this, I can't remember who it was, but he said that in a relationship, there's always one person that loves the person more than the other. There's never, you'll never have a relationship where one person loves equally the other person. Mm -hmm. You might love your wife more than she loves you, or might, your might, wife might love you more. Mm -hmm. you, you will never know. You, your kids might love you more than you love your kids. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you? How are you going to measure that, right? In my case, well, I'm sure the kids love me as well. <laughs> I'm sure they love yeah. you, yeah. but but does that make sense? Yeah. So with your instructor, like even as an instructor, I'm sure you're the same. You might have more affection for your students than they have for you. There's a and very, that's the painful part about being a coach. There's a very 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 personal investment that teachers yeah. make, and you will only know that like parenthood when you teach. Yeah, hundred. I'm sorry. There there are, there are a million and one people. Well, I've been teaching now for 19 years, 18 years. Right? I was you know I was teaching at Carlson's as a there's a blue belt. I was at Cambridge Judo Club. Five years as a purple belt, brown. Uh, you know, I've been teaching a long time in in, in Jiu-Jitsu in this country, and, and you know, two decades, right? And the investment. And I'm not saying this as as a point of kind of fakhr of like, no. oh, I'm showing. I'm just trying to address the point of like understanding that you'll only really understand what it means to invest in someone when you you do it yourself. When you're not when you're not teaching, when you're not giving back, when you're not doing a service to someone, it's very easy from the outside to say. Oh, bro, you didn't give me feedback after my last tournament. Oh, you didn't do this. Oh, you didn't do that. The complaints are very quick to, okay, bro, why don't you come next week and take the session? Yeah. Okay, do that now for months on end and now make a decision as to what grade that person is or how well they're doing or what feedback you need to give them. You will only know that when you take the role of teaching, of instructing. And that's why it becomes a very personal investment into that person. Jiu-Jitsu, again, I'm just sorry to come back to my answer. Yeah, go on, go on. Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. is that... Because there's no one criteria for any given belt, it's at the discretion of the, te the instructor. So that when you do give a, a belt, for me, uh, I'm speaking for myself, not any other instructor, it's a very personal Personally, thing. 100%, yeah? Yeah. I, I, I feel invested in that person. And this is why, again, it can go sour sometimes, and it does. But that, that is a part of me going to that person. You know? And it's like, look, I've, I, you know, I, I, you know, I've given myself to you and and I think it should be that way because it, 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 then it, it empowers the other person to say, well, I've taken that instruction on and now I'm going to do something with it. I'm either going to teach somebody else, I'm going to go do good myself, I'm going to learn how to defend myself, I've got a job out of it. You know, some guys are you know, dormant, some guys have become, you know, fighters, whatever the case is. But there's a personal investment that's made and you will only appreciate that when you start teaching. I don't, I'm sorry, I will disagree with anyone who says, oh, no, it's not. It's The guy is paying a fee and then you can just give it back. When you give from yourself, like you just gave the analogy of the father, it's like that. You're on the mats and you're there, and you oh, and you, and there's no prouder moment when you you, you see your students do what you've asked them to do, or show yeah. a technique that you've shown, or pull it off in a, in a, in a competition or whatever. And then, or ultimately, ultimately, and it's a sour pill to swallow when they beat you with it. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just it's just a fact of never life. tap out your coach yeah. <laughs> out of respect. I, they, they'll I, know they know you've got them but I, just don't tap you know them I, I, <laughs> I welcome joking. it you know my, my guys will go for it and I, I, I love that and it, it's really important because it also helps us yeah yeah 100% it grounds us 100%. a little bit you know we need we need that that, that thing but definitely it's a, it's a very important yeah so it's, it's um I, I really wanted to talk about this subject more deeper because I feel like it's it's almost like a cancer in our in our, in our community um even in jiu-jitsu as well oh, to be honest with you martial arts in general you can take it all. Okay. But um, <laughs> I could talk to you for another two hours, bro. But I could love it. I don't know how long we've been going. One hour, 45 minutes, bro. I could go for another one hour, 45. Um, but I know you came a long way. But I want to ask you, I'm going to end on this one question. Takedowns or pulling guard, bro? Oh, no, no, no. Takedowns. Ah, yes. <laughs> Take I'm sorry. I... I uh, Whilst I, I, I am a pro, predominantly a guard player, people, yeah. you know, I, I enjoy the guard and I love it. And, you know, like whatever success I've had is really through the guard. Jiu-Jitsu, again, uh, the epitome of Jiu-Jitsu is the ability to fight off of your back. Yeah. But, you know, 
takedowns, you know, your ability to be on top, the game, wrestling, judo again, Ipon, yeah. for me, uh, the skill, the tenacity, the ability to do that on uh, uh, a willing, able, and capable opponent, I think is just, you know, it just amazes me, you know. So do you watch Jiu Jitsu? Like, um, I, watch, so I watch everything. Do you judo, watch, judo. Did you watch Polaris recently? Yeah, yeah. It's about, yeah, yeah. What, well, what were your like, thoughts on it? Like, um, you have to remind me which one I've, I've seen so, so many there was a lot of like sitting down and I know there's been um, since that podcast that we did about I don't know if you watched the takedown one no, yeah. uh, I think it was yesterday isn't it? yeah we released it yesterday yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we talked about about pulling guard so, and taking yeah. down and stuff if you get a chance to watch sure. it yeah um, I did but, see it on there I just I was yeah so so um, there was a lot of kind of fight and then you sit down and then kind of like um, you know work for leg entries or whatever it is yeah? Yeah. so obviously being having in being involved in wrestling and um, like I don't like seeing that mm. but also from a from a from a martial arts perspective mm. um, and I'm not there's nothing again I'm not I'm, it's not like nothing personal against that I'm just looking at it as a sport and I understand why judo now and a lot of Olympic sports, they, they've banned certain things. Yeah. yeah? Like, um, uh, and some, 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 some rule sets have banned certain oh, things, the, right? The, the, the evolution of judo in terms of the rule sets, yeah. in my short time that I was doing judo, yeah. have changed dramatically yeah. to minimize that how much time you spend in Neymar's um, um, yeah. yeah, Just to keep the action standing. Yeah. And there's yeah. a good reason for that. I mean, spectators. But I think that's gone a little kill. bit. Because yeah. there's no leg attacks now, no, right? Well, you can't attack yeah, the legs, can't no legs, double yeah. legs. You can't. I mean, before yeah, you I can't grab the legs. Can't you can't do nothing. Yeah. So that's kind of gone a little bit. Yeah, it's the a bit pendulum swung. Yeah, 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 again, but, yeah, but but you understand the 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 the, the, the th I understand mm. now. Mm. Um, but with professional jiu-jitsu now, mm. they've got that kind of debate now. What yeah. what do we do? Yeah, yeah. How do we? Uh, because for from a to make money, mm. it's got to be it's got to be entertaining. Entertaining, of course. And there's nothing more entertaining than than sending someone. You know, flying whether it's a throw, yeah. and what I've, I've noticed there's not enough throws done in jiu jitsu as well. Have you noticed? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very yeah, rare yeah. that you see throws like yeah, arm yeah, throws yeah, or sinagis, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 or even in gi, man. It's yeah, very, it's just yeah. especially in gi. They're very. Um, there's a lot of pulling guard in gi, yeah, and there's not enough. I mean, just kind of. Um, so, how do you approach takedowns in your academy? So, so for us, I, I I feel very. I'm a strong believer in you. You learning judo. In you doing wrestling, yeah. uh, you know, having a wrestling coach and a judo coach, these are all uh, genres of grappling that we must appreciate. Yeah. And uh, for me, you're you're not a complete grappler unless you've done yeah. th those those elements. So there's a the stand up element and there's the ground element. But do you do you, um, when you roll, yeah. for example, in your, in your yeah. I'm not sure how you yeah. set out your classes, yeah. but do you do you have like a, a we, we where have you a start stand from standing? Yeah, man. always start from standing or not like always. some rounds. So for us, because of space, yeah. we simply can't do that. It's just right. not safe to do that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We have an element, and this is something that I, I really enjoy. Is that at the beginning of the class, and I learned this actually uh, when I was going to to judo, judokas would actually do neiwas as a warm up. So they go to the ground and say, okay, we're warming up now. Let's go neiwaza. So we're doing basically jujitsu rolling yeah, on the ground. Yeah. And then we do the opposite. We say, actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do tashiwaza. We're going to do stand-up. So basically, we're resting for about 25 minutes before we start any of our jujitsu. So it's all, you know, stand-up. It's all uh, throws, judo, double leg, single leg. For me, it's it's pivotal that people... Learn. I had a very interesting experience teaching somebody. So I was teaching in, 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 in Carlson Gracie Farnborough. And we had a blue belt that came there. He was a very capable young man. He came, you know, maybe 90 kg strong. And I insist that we do takedowns in every class for me. We always start with, you know, I put the guys against the wall. We'll do a few cues. So it's kind of, you know, king of the hill or whatever else we're doing. First one to the takedown. Simple. That's it. And he used to, winner stays on, whatever the case is. And this guy came as a blue belt. And he couldn't take any of my white belts down to the point where the white belts were dumping them on his head. Whoa. And then he, he cried. He went to the corner and he cried. And he was so upset and he threw his blue belt on the floor. He was from a different club. And again, like we talked about before, I encourage people to, from different clubs yeah. to come to. And I said, what's wrong? Because I couldn't do anything here. And it was because there was an overemphasis on putting guard. And that was, that was such a failing on his part. He said, I, I can't believe I've missed this whole, if you can't get them to the floor, what good is your jiu-jitsu? Yeah. You can't sit and pull guard. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, okay. You can. In, well, in, it's, in, in it's, it's like, see, it's, again, it comes down to rule sets. See, what, what, what jiu-jitsu at the moment promotes. And 
this is something that I, I would say to wrestlers is that you see what makes the appeal of jujitsu greater than sometimes the appeal of wrestling is the emphatic end. In jujitsu, it is emphatic. It is clear cut immediately who has won in a submission match. Yeah. When you when a submission is applied, there is no dispute as to who the victor is. In wrestling, and I watch the world, you know, Olympics, I watch the, you know, the World Championships, and and stuff, and it's so close. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the points and this and the pin, and this is four, a pin, and this is a pin, Unless which is quite pin, rare. Yeah. You know, pins are it, it's, it's rare, man. You know what I mean? It's, it's a high level. It's a high level. Yeah. It's just so neck and neck that it becomes Alice like... Snyder, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It was, was like one point. One point. That yeah. was in it. And that was a four-year wait. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you, and you're thinking... And, and as wrestlers, you would appreciate it. I would appreciate it. Oh, man. You see the technique. Yeah. You see the back. Oh, the arm drag. He went there. He went yeah. to, but everyone else can't appreciate that. And that's why that appeal that happens. But then in the jiu-jitsu world or the submission world, the, uh, the submission is king because of that. That beyond the takedown... That's when the action occurs. So, but that's kind of, but the thing is with points jiu jitsu, mm. that's being taken away now a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Because uh, then, then I mean, I, I don't know about black belt level, mm. but I'm looking about, I'm looking at you know, white, blue, mm. white and blue, maybe mm. purple. Um, I don't know, man. Is mm. is it something that, like, for example, because like, they're, they're cutting to the chase? Because at the end of the day, if two guys are not very good at takedowns, this is poor guard. Yeah, because, oh, I see what yeah, you're saying. That, you took it from the takedown element. Yeah, right. So, right, so from yeah, like a yeah. strategy perspective, yeah, we, need, we need to, yeah, yeah, we need to get to the ground. That's how we're yeah. going to finish it. That's we're going to finish it, basically. Right, see, okay. see, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, with, yeah, the, with the emphatic nature of submission, and more often than not, submissions are taken on the ground. They're not yeah. really stand. There, there are a few that some yeah. people do wrist locks and whatnot, but majority of submissions happen on the ground. So why, you know, why waste? This is this kind of thinking. Why waste time standing yeah. up? And then the guard pull happens, and it becomes, it's, it's not very entertaining. The leg entanglements, you go in there, guys rolling. Around. What's he really I don't doing? mind the leg entanglement. Yeah. For me, you know, you know, like for argument's sake, yeah. yeah? Let's imagine there's no time, you know, like Hilo Gracie time, yeah, yeah? yeah? No time limits, yeah, yeah. right? I can understand why they pull guard. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you've got five minutes, I feel like they, especially as a, I always I flip flap on this man. I'm I'm one way, then I go the other way. But yeah? what you've identified there is, is the very point is that it's rule set based. It's, yes, it's, it's kind of competition based. If you've got a five minute round, you've got a ten minute round. IBJJF. What, yeah. what are the rule sets? How are you working? And the, the strategy is applied in in a very specific strategic way. Yeah. So you you'll find people black belts who have been doing jiu jitsu decades, but their takedowns are awful. And then when they're put in a situation where, like you said, you've got five minutes, you've got a few minutes, and you get two points for takedowns, they fail. They f- they I'm flop. just pulling up Polaris's last mm. um, post. So they're talking yeah. about, and this is, this is a, every time I read someone's mm. point of view, mm. uh, so they, they, they talked, um, let's hear your thoughts, athletes being forced to stand for the first period of the match. Mm. So they, they wanna, they're thinking about doing this, right? Mm. So for me, as a as someone who loves wrestling, that's like really appealing. Absolutely. Then I read the comments. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna read some comments to you. And they're yeah. all gonna be jujitsu biased comments. Yeah, yeah. but 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 it's interesting though. Mm. Like so, okay, so yeah. um, no, they don't. Bec- they don't stand because they have rubbish stand up. I use another. I've, I've replaced the word. Mm. Making them stand is even more boring than the immediate sit. Because that's because you don't. Because if you've got rubbish stand up, then no one wants to watch two rubbish guys. Agreed. Does that make sense? So agreed, I, yeah. that I was like, you know what, that makes sense. Yeah. But how are you going to move the game forward, isn't it? How are you going to the next generation? How, how then do you make those guys have exactly, good take? Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. So then it goes, uh, it goes, be a hundred percent harsh with stalling calls instead of doing that. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? So, like, I get that bit. So instead of actually forcing them to do takedowns, yeah. if they stall, yeah, make the, so if the guy's sitting there and the guy's yeah. not willing to engage, engage, make them both stand up again. Yeah, yeah, so that that makes sense again. Instead of forcing, I mean, them, if you look at uh, the ADCC rules, so ADCC is a, is the submission wrestling. There's yeah, no, there's no gi. Uh, they have that kind of thing. The first five minutes, there are no points. There's penalized. There's no. I mean, okay, let's go into the points where you get penalized first for minutes, pulling. Like, first five minutes, first so five ten minute round. There are no ten, points. Ten minute round. Uh, yeah, That's mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you know, when you go into the points time, yeah, uh, you get penalized for putting guard. Because then there's, you know, I think also we have to look at it from a, combat, from a combative, combative element is that pulling guard represents nothing of a real combat situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. So that for me, is very, although I'm a guard player, I'm, I'm, you know, put my hands up. I'm saying, what, what does that represent of anything? If you were to, you know, if, if I look, if I say this to my students all the time, if I was in prison, 
God protect us. <laughs> and you only had one hour of training. Okay, yeah. what type of exercise would you do? If you had only one hour of, of, of grappling training, what would you would you work on? Would it be guard pulling? No. no. Yeah. So, uh, as in, we, we have to evolve ourselves as as as, as pure grapplers and, right. and see ourselves through the whole spectrum of, of grappling. And takedowns is a very very critical part of that. You can't you can't dismiss that yeah. because again, uh, sorry to, to carry on that example, uh, combat. Where does the guard pull come in in a real life situation? Which is what again we talked about this earlier on in terms of martial arts and their their objectives to defend life, to start, you know, uh, in, in times of war, in times of conflict. Is that going to help you? And that's why again, I'm just trying at, to think of a samurai. Yeah. No, the swords are dropped on the floor now, mm-hmm. and he's jumped in someone's guard. Oh, he's, he's pulling guard. <laughs> on the, I'm just trying to think <laughs> how that would work. Yeah, so it would. Yeah. So it's yeah. it's not it's not a, it's not a good thing in that way. You know, it's a strategic move on, on the part. And I think of the jiu-jitsu department. clubs do not train takedowns enough. 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 Yeah. At all. Uh, some some don't train at all. Nothing. This is, a, this is the point. That's like the story I told you exactly. So it's so a, it's a, it's a and that's why at Legion, what we've done is. Um, so we used to be heavily on the wrestling side, mm-hmm. yeah. So we started off as a wrestling club, yeah. And uh, we've always, Jesus has always been. We've, we've had, I don't know if you Gabriel from GFT, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know Gabriel, Gabriel, yeah. So he 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 coached with us. We had our best, mashallah. Yeah. We had Viking uh, from Glory Viking Graphics, one, yeah. Viking one, yeah. yeah. Um, so we've had a few um, Jiu-Jitsu guys, and, uh, and obviously Amir and Coach Khalid and Coach Shamal they're teaching now, um, but. Wrestling's always been, and there's something that we've always wanted to have a unified grappling system. Mm-hmm. So wrestling and jujitsu mm-hmm. at an equal level, mm-hmm. not not yeah, not at the expense not of each other. As yeah. the exp- uh, yeah. do jujitsu, but don't do wrestling. Do wrestling, don't do jiu- exactly. Uh, yeah. They 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 work together so they well. Complement each other so well. This it, is it. So yeah. that's why we teach wrestling, pure wrestling and pure jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Now the thing is, it's since the last competition mm-hmm. was. How do you stitch that together now? Mm-hmm. So that now it's kind of we're working on, mm-hmm. you know, stitching those things together properly. Like which because t- obviously there's certain things in wrestling you you would never do. In, you wouldn't in, do, yeah, it wouldn't help you. you yeah, like for mean. example, um, was the, the the threat of the guillotine from double legs. Yeah, yeah. Like Unless you're wrestling, you don't want it straight in. Straight, straight in. in. Yeah, now, so. obviously, depending how you dump them, but mm-hmm. there's a, there's always there's always uh, so maybe snap snap singles, yeah. much, much head on the inside. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, front headlocks are not being used in jiu-jitsu yeah. nearly enough. Yeah. How often do you see front headlocks in jiu-jitsu? Yeah. They're very effective, yeah. you know. Like, yeah. so taking and also a lot of people sleep on wrestling groundwork. Yeah. Uh, like uh, you said, you got that Macedonian guy. What's yeah, his yeah. name? Sorry, yeah. I forget his name now. But he, in High Wycombe, we've got a Macedonian. Yeah, wrestler so there. A, I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen his class. The, he, he, I'm sure he does groundwork with you yeah. guys, yes, like yeah, uh, yeah. parterre and stuff. I mean, I, I don't know if you know Lubo. Lubo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lubo. So I, I trained with Lubo in, yeah. in, in all the shot. And yeah. if you see his ground game, yeah, it's mad, unbelievable. The the, the you're, you're taking the to... back swiftness and, and, and attacking oh, the legs from the God, from the side and and the adeptness. You see, only wrestlers can do that. Yeah, you see their their ability to homogenize. Jiu-Jitsu is, is like a cinch for them. You yeah, know, the minute yeah. they come to ground grappling, it's just like... They get it. They get it. And they it's love like, it because yeah. it's, e- it's, um, it's it's not it, easy. I don't it's disrespect easy. Jiu-Jitsu. No, no, no. In comparison rest, to, to yeah, stand-up wrestling, wrestling it's, it's easier. Yeah. Wrestling, judo, stand-up yeah. is hard. hard yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know? it's not easy. So, yeah, that's that's kind of like... that's the, I would say that's the next generation. Yeah. It's kind of going back to where it started, right? Yeah. Circular. Circular. It went through the whole... And what I love about Jiu-Jitsu is the element of creativity yeah, yeah. that yeah. traditional martial arts don't allow you to do and it's cre- and jiu-jitsu has, has allowed that to happen yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of open of license in, in terms exactly of exactly yeah, yeah, absolutely. brother Nisar jazakallah khairan yeah, thank you very much for coming and Pleasure. we're gonna you're gonna steal us get a munch get a munch yeah, yeah. 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 and you guys i will see you on the next one <laughs>